Then we can make pub. You can publish a version with the, the, all the way you want it for, for that we can give to, yeah. to the Greyhawk community. That is, that is the awesome with, with the um, with the everything in, in your place. And then if somebody in the Greyhawk community want one with the Laurel Talmai stuff, is in the Darlene version. We can make one for that way too. It'll finish up your legacy, man. Yeah. What's that? I'm going to show you something now. I'm not giving you the finger. Please understand. I'm <laughs> going to hold up my little finger. Okay, no problem. It's got, see all oh, that oh. black and blue crap? Oh, what man. have you done? I had an ingrown uh, uh, nail, and then I also cut the nail and I screwed it up. So between the two, just don't get my, my middle finger is a little screwed up. So tomorrow when I go to the hospital, I'm going to show to my my nurse and tell him that um, well now I'm not giving you the finger even though it looks like it. <laughs> let's let's just hope it's completely fine and it's not yeah. uh, it's not blood infection or anything like that, right? Right. Yeah. Oh, I can imagine. It looks like it does. That would be an entire tube of Neosporin if I, that's what I would do. But that's me, because I'm, I'm a little. Bit I don't think Neosporin is going to get to it. It's, yeah. Uh, but for for me, for me, that's what I would do. Is I try to drown in that if I was doing it. So I'm a, you know, I'm a big. Uh, I don't. I'm not one that likes pain. Oh, if you can avoid it, it's yeah. good. Yeah. My back is coming back again, so tomorrow I'll Jason's get trying to get on. Oh, here comes... Oh, look! Oh, here comes Chuck. Yay! Awesome. Hey, Chuck. You're muted. Hello. Yeah, I'm always muted. You're always <laughs> muted. That's because, yeah. Hey, good to see you again. Hey. How Len. Are you? This is Chuck Combo. He's the community manager for Troller Games and a real good friend of mine. And uh, he is a, a great guy. Yes, definitely. <laughs> I don't know about that. And he, oh, yeah, yes. and, and we know, he, we know he about plays that. a fun character when he when he plays in the game. So mm -hmm. that too. Good evening, everyone. I've not so. been feeling too well. I fell asleep. I apologize. I meant to. Ah, that's all right. It's okay. Yeah. Something about getting older, I like naps. I don't know what it is. <laughs> I had a good one after dinner today, so yeah. yeah. Well, the wife was supposed to be back by now. She went to her mother's. Back, so so uh, it's alarm. okay. We can uh, we can talk over this and uh, people can hear it. So Chuck, uh, tell tell Len what uh, Stephen Chanel, the owner of Troller Games, found out about when uh, he found out Leonard and Lauren Hill and everything. Well, he just kind of looked at me and said, let's do it. <laughs> let's do it, <laughs> let's do it right? That is so cool. Yeah. He was very excited. Once he made the connection. Well, oh, oh, yeah. you know, one, two, and three, TSR paid me. Oh, this is... We, he knows, they know that. They know that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, we could have a whole session on them talks. Yeah. Oh yeah, and they know I'm, that. I'm, yeah, I'm working on a Lendor map uh, anyway, and I think uh, you so, so we can we can work work on a, a special version for the module. So if sure. you get that one really, really, really soon, uh, it's being developed anyway. So it's only it's only the changes you want to make that need to be paid for, so to speak, and then you can use it. So you want that. Yeah, Orion, I'm sorry about that. Uh, you know, we're just, we're talking in the background here. We're BSing yeah, we've about been some things here. My bad yeah. on that. Um, yeah. Um, oh, can you hear some background talk. Yeah, so. we should not talk about stuff like this on the street. Oh, that's a, yeah, that's a good reason. <laughs> but, yeah, so, uh, yes. Hmm. Yes, sir. Chuck's going to join us tonight because Chuck, all these, a lot of these modules Chuck loves. So, uh. Uh, dearly. Yeah, absolutely. Dearly, dearly. I need to probably win the stream. I mean, we're waiting for Jason. Uh, for Jason Zavoda uh, is having a laptop issue. So we're just waiting for Jason to get on. What's Jason? Can you call me with the broom of your cap? Excuse me? Well, yeah, it's cool when you when you turn your head around. And, uh, and oh, it's that software on the camera. Yeah. 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 yeah, the green screen. It's green on the inside or something. Yeah, this was a, 
Oh, Ryan, baseball. this is official banner that you probably shouldn't have heard. <laughs> He's been sneaking in there. Are you already live? So, if you can hear me over this, uh, our first game skate. I'll be on the screen for two minutes, guys, and then we'll come on like one. To, we'll come on one to two minutes early. Um, each of those pieces take like between nine and sixteen hours to print, depending on um, depending on where uh, where they are in the in the process, you know, so uh, of uh, of production. And uh, it's uh, it's pretty cool. It really is. It's a great. Uh, we just got into it with. We have two 3D printers, and my guys are hard at work at. Uh, Getting that and the roads, we had the roads up on Thursday. They were the first ones we did. What's up, Green? How you doing? Part two. Gary, let's uh, see. So Jason Zavarda will be on uh, once he gets his computer issues resolved, and uh, Gary Julian will be on later. And I just spilled uh, my seltzer on my shirt. At least it's only seltzer, right? All right. I looked at the. Well, I'll wait. I'll save this for the. When we get on, but man, we got a. We didn't get through as anywhere near as many modules as I thought uh, two weeks ago. <laughs> uh, I, I was like, oh my gosh, we haven't really gotten through. You know, we didn't get through. So. There's a lot of adventure out there. Yeah. So since you're going to be doing an inn in Tringley, is that the correct pronunciation? Yeah, uh, Lord Peak's Haven is like, it's in Tringley, yeah, it's it's um, Tringley in the county of Ulick, and it goes back to like 19, I'm going to say 92 was when we started, and uh, there's a bar there, and they have this, they have, Len, they have these, you ever see the felt pictures of the dogs doing pool, right, you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> They have them on the wall, and it, you get to get your picture on the wall if you drink a certain drink, three of them, without passing out. That's the whole deal about the game, the game we had, because, so you know. That's the troll piss. That, yeah, yeah, exactly. That's that drink. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And no one, not worth it's an Irish bar. Uh, yeah, yeah. A PC has not done it yet. Not one successful PC has ever. Some have drank two, but not three. You have to publish an article in Worth Journal with the stats for that drink in various cases. <laughs> Kind of con rolls you have to make. Just remember one thing about Irish bars: never go to the one on St. Patrick's Day. Oh my gosh! <laughs> well, I, uh, if you want chaos? That's it. Yeah, well, I have a good story about that too. Uh, in my early twenties, there. All right. So we are on. Good evening, everyone. Hey, coffee. Hey, green. Hey, Orion. Dismiss. Wiley. Cold. The whole crew, look at, baboon, look at that. So Chucky, thanks for the host. So we have, uh, we're missing one of our uh, discussion persons tonight. He, he should be on shortly. And then we have a bonus one coming on late. And we all know that Gary Hulian likes to show late up in the show. Kind of after Len does his, his uh, part here, uh, Gary will come on. There's a couple things he wants to talk about this topic. But tonight I have uh, Anna Meyer, the great Anna Meyer with Hi. me. I have... The, the great of all greats, Leonard Lakofsky, with me tonight. And also, uh, make an appearance. It's been a little while, Chuck, hasn't it? Chuck it Combo. Uh, you know him as a streamer, as Babunski, but you know him from uh, being the community mag uh, manager at Troller Games as well. So my good friend Chuck Combo is with me tonight. And we have, um, we have a, a great... A great group here. So thank you, Skagath, for that. 16 months, man. Where'd the time go? I, now I feel, now you're making me feel old, Skagath. Jeez. <laughs> that is so fantastic. Thank you. It um, doesn't take work, you know. <laughs> uh, it's, um, man, it, uh, we've been doing this for two years now. And uh, I, I look back, um, and I talked about this in the 100th Gabin, and I think Leonard came on at number 55, and we're up to 105. So that's like 50 episodes ago. That's, over, you know, 
with with some breaks here and there on a week. So that's like well over a year. We're having I'm having a blast with this. So uh, just enjoy the show tonight. I want to show you something. This is the st look at that. Ah, oh, Chuck, thanks. Thank you. This is the stack that we got through. And look, there's that awful return to the Temple of Elemental Evil in there. This is the stack, Len, that we got through um, last time. Okay? Uh, you know, and Len, Len wanted to discuss Ravenloft. We talked about that. We talked about um, uh, with Carlos on. We talked about Shokanth. And we talked about Tharsden. I think, without messing up, this is the stack we have not talked about yet. So it's bigger. Uh, I, I was like, oh my gosh, I don't think we talk about this, 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 and this, and this. So we got a ton of great content tonight. So um, thank you all for coming on. So uh, Chuck, as a newbie here uh, for uh, recently, uh, what do you want to say to this, man? Look at that wall. Look at these uh, these modules. I mean, uh, when you start I, I want playing. you to give me your house. That's what I want you to do. <laughs> <laughs> what else? What See, do you Chuck think? wants to move in. Yeah. What, mm -hmm. what do you think about some of these old classics? Oh, are you kidding me? It makes me feel like I'm 12 years old again, 10 years old. Yeah. I guess. You know, I mean, you see all that stuff, and especially the older right. ones, you know, it, just really, sure. it just really brings you out. I know, look at Ghost Tower, man. Yeah, and then look at that. There you got Bone Hill, and you got, there, there are two, two lens, Assassin's Knot and Bone hey, Hill. Assassin's Knot, let me tell you what. Mm -mm, that's some good times in that end right there. Yeah. Right and if you look down, this is uh, the Assassin's Knot was, uh, I think, the 29th greatest module of all time, according to the article. Yeah. Gary is coming on to discuss this, uh, th that article out of uh, the dungeon from 2004, and really? also to discuss um, uh, something that it's been a bone of contention about where it really goes. And I, I asked him to do that, and that's the Isle of Dread. I want to I want to get that out in the open because oh, we yeah. had a little bit of a talk about that on on Wednesday. I just want to get that where it should be on the map. <laughs> so, so oh, Len, really? uh, we talked about your mo our, uh, modules two weeks ago, and we talked about Ravenloft. Uh, I was hoping Jason would be on by now because Jason really loves these as well. I know, um, I know you probably want to talk about this one that you did right the giants yeah that'd be a one yeah well, that's the, that's three modules together in that one isn't yeah, it? yeah yeah i and i don't have the individual ones uh that are in any reasonable copy uh they're packed away so i got out the g123 one but um does there uh, you got any other uh, hidden gems that you remember from the old days that we didn't discuss last time you want to talk about too well uh, not really because i usually didn't when I DM'd, yeah. I was DMing the stuff that I designed in, in uh, Lendor Isle. So cool. Uh, I didn't take them to other modules. Okay. Okay. But you did do the Giants. Uh, did you place that in Lendor? I don't you... think we played the Giants. I mean, I read I okay. read through the Giants, and I think I played in it at least one of the three. I think it was the Hill Giant one. So Excellent. So I got to play in it. Uh, I got to play a ranger. Oh, really? Who DM'd for you? I don't remember. Might have been Dave Rogan. Okay. Uh, I, I, thought, I thought you were going to say Gary for a second. I was gonna be like, wow. <laughs> that would have been awesome. Um, wow, Amazon. You know this, This. Uh, you know, I did the Axewood a little while ago. Yeah. And I'm looking that the Axewood is, is kind of... Uh, among the three um, towns of Wayberry, Noldra, and Tringley. Yep. But, as is usual, there are no roads. So, how does that all go together? Do you have a road system for Wayberry, Tringley, and Noldra relative to the Axwood? Somewhere along the line, you have to cross that river. Um, Let's see here. We have Tringley. Get in the Duchy of Mulek, and then you can go up to Wayberry, and you can go over to Tringley. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I have lots of roads that I put on my map for, for around there, so to speak. And and there's also the, the, the city of Axgard have come there later, been added into it. So, so and, and a bunch of other places, too. But there is a, both one road that goes next to the Axwood, and then one road that goes like 20, 30 miles further away. And and the one goes around goes down to uh, 
one uh, Linuden is the, the city in, in Kieland, and that then goes the road up towards Tringley. So, so whenever you get a chance, shoot me that map. Yeah, I'll do that. Yep. Mm -hmm. Because I'm thinking that uh, the Axwood is close enough to, to Tringling that yeah. the uh, Wood Elves, I, I would think Wood Elves would go into towns from time to time. I don't see why they wouldn't. One's yeah. not, not deep in know, the forest. So exclusively yeah. Um, yeah. Forest, forest folks. Yeah. But the they might want is not a that little big entertainment or, or probably supplies would be yeah. So yeah, Anna sure. has a Sylvan Elf in my campaign, a ranger mage named Imri yeah. Saurel, who's from the Axewood. And she traveled to Altamira, uh, our, our free city in, in, in the uh, um, northeast county of Ulick. Is she uh, a wood elf? Sylvan, yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she was on the chase of a renegade Sylvan Elf that uh, yep. was trying to turn herself, uh, give herself dark elven abilities. It was pretty cool. And then... Uh, you know, she was on the, uh, on the trail of that character, and uh, that's how, one of the adventures we did to introduce that character into the campaign. So, uh, yeah, always, always something fun. So, uh, I, I so, so they switched up uh, Zoom, everyone. Instead of me looking down for the new sign-ins, I got to look up to the top. Oh, there it comes. Just as we speak, here comes Jason. So, um, awesome. did she catch her? Yes, Alderaan. In fact, um, if you go onto YouTube and you go to... The uh, pre, uh, it's called the Greyhawk All-Stars event. It's December of 2019. It's pre-PAX Unplugged. And Anna and Christoph and Christoph's partner, Anita, were at my house that night. That adventure is on the YouTube mirror, so you can watch it. Uh, and that's Emery's first adventure. So, uh, yeah, you can actually watch that one. It's it's so old. It's, you know, they only keep them for 90 days on Twitch. But then you got to go to then you got to go to the YouTube mirror. So, yeah, no one problem. One other thing I'll mention quickly. Sure. Um, I I gave David Boggs the, uh, the, the prize. Awesome. And I sent you a document that has the people. It has the map drawn and it has a picture of the Lego model. So if anybody wants that, they can either get it from you because you have it, or they can get it from me, you know, Liam and at AOL.com if anybody wants it. I know Amy might be interested, but I, I don't know who else. Excellent. Well, um, usually they'll whisper me and then I'll pass it along to you or they'll just send it now because they know your email address now, everyone on here, and that's a good thing too. So we got Liam in at AOL.com as well. Jason, how you doing? I'm doing okay. How's my audio? Perfect. Your audio is wonderful. Your camera sucks, though. <laughs> yeah, well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, this is all the camera I want. Yeah. Um, Sounds good. Yeah. Uh, Jason, I think we did camera for you twice, right? And uh, oh, Just once yeah. so far. Just one time. But, but that, you know, the system was so bad that. Yeah. So, um. While we have Len, why don't we talk about this one uh, and kick it off, uh, bounce around. Uh, we got all four here, and uh, I want to get everyone's opinions on the top rated of all time, according to that article, was GDQ, right? Uh, what's that called? The Spider Queen or whatever that one was against the Spider Queen, mm -hmm. where they combined them all together. Now, I, Queen I, of Spiders, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that included... That included, and let's do them separately, the G series and then D1, 2, and 3. I just kept, I just brought and out D1. And Q1, yeah. Yeah. So, and Q1, too, which I don't consider that a, a prize by anything. Right, and, Chuck? And, I mean, Q1's a little bit of a disaster. And some new connecting material between the adventures. Yeah. So, I never, I have it buried away, but I never used it. What did you think of, of why don't we just start with the G series? Because, um, that is so iconic. I mean, that's probably the go-to adventure. If you want to do high level in Greyhawk, that's what you think first, right? Is that, am I correct on that? Anyone else think of something different when they want to do a high level adventure that's published in Greyhawk? No. I mean, immediately you just think of Johnson Drow. Yeah. Because I would imagine the players in that must be 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, somewhere in yep. there. Yep. 8 to 12. Look, 8 to 12, it says on here, Len. 8 to 12. Yeah. That's right. Get yeah. on, man. Yeah. But you, you know, the, the early adventures, they, they uh, did these quantity things so that uh, 
they felt if you had a bunch of lower level adventures, you could uh, bull your way through some of these uh, some of these things um, instead of having a handful of high levels. Uh, so you know you always had those wide um, you know adventuring uh, level recommendations. And right, right. So that there there was a little bit of a you know. Um flexibility in there you know uh, which which is understandable i just um it was really when you think about it when you go to g1 that starts off with the, one of the biggest fights i've ever you ever do right well you know it's coming from a tournament adventure and it's what it does is it gives you um the potential for doing this massive massive uh, fight um and uh, it's, it's I, I mean, one of the mistakes of G1 is it should, uh, it should let you uh, know that you, you don't have to follow the uh, big, the big hall. Because it's, it's just, uh, they have this great hall and all the giants in the world are there. And um, in the convention play uh, as the tournament, um, you know, it was a time thing. But if you're running it as a campaign, um, you, you have to realize that's uh, it's it's like this special night where the cloud giant ambassador is there, and it's only going to happen that way once. So um, it's you know it's a bit of a thing for P DMs that are not experienced to realize because I've I've seen people who don't realize that doesn't happen again and again and again, or that if the characters come, you know, come in and uh, check out the uh, setting and leave, they're not going to come another night to the exact same thing. Um, That's a good point. So, you know, I, I, from from what I've read is that um, uh, Gygax, he, he wasn't really convinced that people would even want adventures. They'd want to do their own. And then when they did the adventures, I think he just under, felt that you'd understand these things, that they're not static, they're kinetic things. And... Um, you're you're going to tailor them to your own liking. So, G one's uh, especially that way because of that that big um, that big dinner where where all the giants are there instead of being in all these other locations they could be. Yeah. And and, yeah. and you always point this out, Jason. This module G one is eight pages. That's it. <laughs> I know. It's so iconic. And it's eight pages long. Mm hmm. Well. Go ahead. Well, that's what I always felt. You know, that was the hallmark of those early modules. Is, uh, um, the G and D series, they were so, especially the G series, they were so thin and yet so full of, of uh, a wealth of uh, material that's in there. Len, does anything stand out in these G? I know you read it and you said, you know, you may have uh, been a player in it. Oh, but yeah. Uh, it's been a while. Uh, I mean, what I can remember with Giants, and it's not from G1, but um, I had a party that was first and second, and I think one, the Druid, was third level. And they're out in the wilderness, and they spot this hill giant. Now, this is an exercise where you're supposed to run. <laughs> yes, yeah. <laughs> but they went and attacked the damn thing. So as they're coming in, Boulder gums and takes the druid out. I mean, literally out. Yeah. A boom goes flying across the field and is laying there with like two hit points on. And they go, "Oh, wait a minute. That's 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 top. Yeah, wait till you fight him because I'm going to give him the strength bonus for hitting you. What? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not just two to sixteen. It's two to sixteen plus seven or eight, whatever. Oh, you were cruel. But, oh, hell. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I, see, one of the things that I liked about uh, L, uh, not L2, uh, uh, Edition 2 was they beefed up the giants and they beefed up the dragons, yeah. which is really what should happen. So I've been, every time I, once L, L, uh, Edition 2 came out, I beefed them up. And I said to my players, now listen, kids, if you run into a giant again, it's different. If you run into a dragon again, it's really different. So don't do your old tactics. Your old tactics may not work. Uh, 
And you may have to decide, well, should I do these guys or shouldn't I do these guys? You better reconsider that very, very carefully. Because a mature dragon, certainly the, the blue and, and red guys, can really make hash out of the party. Yeah. And that's where you, as a DM, have taught, taught those players a lesson, and that was you don't have to fight everything you come across. Correct. You know? Yes. And, and that's Just it. Just because there's a random encounter doesn't mean you have to interact with it. Chuck, you got to have some two cents on uh, on that, man. <laughs> Oh, man, I tell you, I, what Jason and Lynn said both are very real and very true. Um, I'll tell you, I'll give you a different spin on it. Okay. Um, you know, growing up and running the module, I must have ran those modules a million times because I love the Giant series, um, the three particularly. Uh, they're just wonderful. But uh, I actually ran a whole campaign for a while, just them fighting uh, for a country that bordered, that was being, it's like more of like a, an attack on a special on an actual country that was being attacked by these different giants through the stages of the modules. But what's interesting about those modules is when you take those modules and you try to use them in today's um, rule rule systems where they used for five feet. If you do that and set that down and do it virtually, it'll blow your mind. <laughs> you realize that the giants were the worst architects ever alive <laughs> no way that you're going to fit all these giants into little 20 foot spaces you know yep. and when you throw that down on like a vtt i had to actually go in and resize the maps to be this is no lie the 10 foot squares i had to make them 20 foot squares for it to work because when these these different rule systems especially some of the new ones like 5e where they had these uh rules where it's called squeezing all this crazy stuff anyway yeah. And you're playing with people who do know only those rule sets, that those rules, they they expect to get those advantages. And you're like, no, 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 they're not squeezing. Who would build a house that you had to squeeze in? But if you take the old design and apply it to the new stuff, and when I tried to run like um, I'll never forget downstairs on the second level, there's a when you go down, there's a room where there's some um, I think there were hobgoblins sitting around there, and there's like a table, couple of tables, but there's a ton of them back in the back end of the cavern where they've got it cut out into rooms. And when a fight starts, those all those hobgoblins pour out. I think it's orcs on the whole giant one. It's orcs, okay. Yeah, it's pour, I think it's orcs, they, yeah. It could be orcs, but they pour out. And there's like, I don't even know, 50. 70? Yeah. 50? It's a ton. Yeah. Yeah. And when you do that virtually, oh man, if you don't know, because <laughs> it's totally it's a totally different world versus doing it theater of the mind, which we grew up doing. You know, I never worried about all that stuff. Are you talking fantasy grounds for the most part in this case? Uh, any of them. That, yeah. Roll 20. About, it works. All, okay. All right. It's about 5e. Yeah, in 5e fantasy grounds or 5e roll 20, this is yeah. the issue that's going to come up. That makes sense. Yeah. And you have to learn how to do groups and make like I would take like one token and make it like, okay, this is five orcs. Okay. And then if they chopped it down, I would chop down the, the it was just, yeah. it was a really neat experience for me because never encountered that before. <clears throat> Yeah, you need some sort of, of, of mass combat system. or, or You or, have or, to. You yeah. have to. You know, uh, when, when you're doing it around a table, you just say, ah, oh, this giant falls or this orc falls, and mm -hmm. you go on. But when they're looking at a visual representation of the battle, tactically set up, which is the way this, these new games are made, it's different. It was a real challenge for me. I really had to think out of the box. It, it worked out good. I mean, don't get me wrong, but, man, it was some work. It really was. And like you said, it's an eight-page adventure. You don't expect to open that book up and have all these massive battles and all this stuff going on. You know, it's really it was really unique. You know, yeah. and a ton of magic. And they set up all the in the modules in the Not module stuff. Yeah, you would go to a convention and run something you design, and they were used to dungeons where it was like the dungeon game. You kick down the door, you kill the monster, you take the treasure, and then you go to the next room. As if the people next door have heard nothing. Yeah, yeah. Of yeah. course, I don't play yeah. that way. Yeah. Now I, uh, I, I, you, you, you make up a commotion somewhere. The other doors are going to open up, and people are going to come out. And they go, yeah. "What's that?" I said, mm -hmm. "It's them reacting to you yeah. doing what you just did." Yeah. And you do that oh. in, a, in, a, in a, a giant surprise! Stand? Surprise! Yeah. <laughs> all these giants and orcs. It's like all of a sudden you've got one giant battle, yeah. but it's not on a battlefield. It's in a building. You know, it's like yeah. Uh, 
And they also had no sense. One, one can live in one room and there was a red dragon in the next room and stuff. And, yeah, and, it's and stupid. Why do they yeah. go to the bathroom and find food or any? Yeah, that was, that was like, there were never yeah. any bathrooms. There were never any privies. Ever. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, some of those dungeons would have three or four entrances. And yeah. one of those entrances might be run by a bunch of orcs. So mm -hmm. they come in and go out and they know better than to go deeper into their own works yeah. because they don't want to cope with all of that crap. So the players are really confused as to what the hell's going on. Yep. They yep. think, well, okay, we go in and we, we kill off some of these orcs and Very then we cool. keep going. And yep. then all of a sudden, the panorama changes. Yep. And what really gets to be fun is if you have one that's kind of a civilized group, bandits. So at one point, they rush in and it's somebody cooking. And he's making pots of food and stuff and he's got tableware out and everything you would they go, what the hell's this? It's a kitchen. Yep. But 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 where's the treasure? <laughs> uh, the the the, the uh, steak is pretty good. <laughs> it's not worth anything. It's, yep. They got surprised so easily yep. when you just you know when you just did things in something that resembled an orderly manner. Yeah. It's like on TV, you go into this ancient place and a bunch of candles are lit. Who the hell lights all these candles? <laughs> it, it, they're, they're, it's, it drives me crazy when I see stuff like that. Yeah. But sometimes I had a, one of the best fights I had in my last campaign was when they were a bunch of, of, um, of orcs and, and the... Um, what well, then th there was a big female orc and she was the, the the cook so to speak so she was she was making the food for the other ones and 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 in order to stave off she she was a, a barbarian because she knew how to deal with anyone who would come and try and steal her food so when the characters got in there got a fight she had a big ladle that was like a, a long mm -hmm. thing made of a heavy cast iron and she just took that thing and just whacked the first one and she got a critical hit with almost maximum damage and he just flew and killed the first PC that came in in through the door like that and they were terrified and she was yelling like don't come in and steal my food in orcish and they were terrified of it and then i had a brutal fight trying to get over her because she knew how to defend her food that was awesome fun that's you know, it, it, and g1, go. g1 touches on all these things that you don't at the time you saw nothing like this really yep. but g1 was supposed to be this this real um uh, a real home uh you know, uh, yep. setting for for the hill giants, and of course these hill giants made no sense according to the monster manual hill giants, which are like cavemen, mm -hmm. um, and these are more like, um, say, Anglo Saxons, and um, you know on that technological level, and there's a kitchen with, um, you know, uh, there, there's one with a rolling pin. And there's a crash with uh, giant children. Um, there's a trophy hall. Uh, so, the, you know, they were trying to, uh, this little adventure is supposed to have this little eye view of the giant, for Greyhawk, the giant uh, society there. And, uh, you know, talking about how that the one of the most unbalanced things, though, is the orcs. It's just that the orcs needed more there needed to be a bigger underground area for the orcs to yeah, for have many. make sense. And uh, you're talking about squeezing things in. That second level actually had two fire giants in it. So, um, you know, the hill giants are supposed to be, what, 9 feet to 11 feet tall? Hills are 12. So I mean, fires are 12 and uh, frosts are 15. Yeah, oh, you yeah. know. Uh, so, you know, those are... The, the the fire giants would be even uh, you know more pressed in there, but that's, um, that's that's, that's, that's probably brilliant. like the most unbalanced thing out of the. Uh, otherwise, I really like the seven. What was that, Chuck? Oh, I just said I just got to thinking when he said when when Jason said that, you've also got the three stone giants on the other end, and if it ends up being like my fight was in the middle of that room, they're going to hear that, and so you've got three more giants who show up and. In my case, a few times when I ran that snare, they just came in there and kind of stood around and watched, you know, because they're stone giants. You know, they're just kind of like, what's going on here? So here, here, here's a memory. Of, flip out, you know. 
remember, I, I um, and I know Len doesn't like this, but I have critical hits in my campaign, and so does the ever mysterious Tim. That's right. Okay? Yeah. So, <laughs> and Tim, <laughs> Tim had an NPC named uh, uh, no, it was actually one of Marco's characters. Marco's character Panul. And a stone giant during that big fight threw a boulder. And you know stone giants do 3 to 30 throwing boulders. It critically hit him and did triple damage. Nine didn't, so it basically hit him right in the face. That was the end of that. That character just, you know, it's just like like a fine, you know, a goo on the wall at that point. Yeah, so we had a massive critical hit at that. That's one of the things I remember. But I didn't DM that. Tim was DMing that in his campaign, so... You know, yeah. just to add to that, Jay, you know the hallway where the kitchen's at? And yeah. Uh -huh. All the way down? Those giants came out, and I had them actually bowl the boulders instead of throwing them like a bowling alley. Right. It was <laughs> terrifying. The, the, the players were terrified because yep. they were rolling yep. them. I don't think they, <laughs> yep. that, that's what, what happened. Yeah. That's what happened in that orc fight with with the 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 the, the cook lady, and and what happened was that first when they they get vengeful and wanted to come back up the stairs, she simply poured down the food and that became slippery and stuff. Right. And then, right. Throwing, and then when the end when they were determined to come up, she threw the whole damn big kettle down and uh. that was like a huge thing. So so she mauled it. It was it was awesome fun. They were had so much fun with that fight. Yeah. So yeah. here's my one disappointment. It has nothing to do with the modules. We have someone running Exhibition of Barrier Peaks for Grey Alcon. We have someone running, uh, you know, a, a couple other modules. We have no one running any of the G modules. That would have been cool if someone would, was, was yeah. running one of those. Well, see, let, let me point something out, not to interrupt. Us. I never can understand. I've, one thing, I've, and I will admit this, I have a hard time, you know, taking some of these modules that were supposed to be for tournament play and Two make and them for hours. a three and a half hour. You session. can't do this in three. Half, you can't like, do G one in three and a half four hours. Well, you, mm -hmm. uh, you know it was. Um, I know. There's a write up of that tournament in one of the Dragon magazines uh, uh, of yeah. the G series when they ran it as a tournament adventure. Uh, they wrote up uh, a, a play, uh, you know, a, a play report, um, and I forgot what. Um, what dragon it's in, but it's uh, the write-ups in one of the uh, early dragon mags. It's amazing. It, it really is amazing that it was a, a tournament module. Um, and uh, by the way, I just did a shout out for Troller Games. If you don't know from the announcement last week, that code is good for Lord Gazumba followers. TLGLG15 off, all in caps. 15% off your order at the Troller Games store all the time. Isn't that awesome? Forever. Forever, and as long as I'm streaming. <laughs> That's now, I will, I will say something, Jay. Check your PMs, though. Our Facebook address finally changed. After I, I got, after I saw that, and you got yeah, it to Troll Lord Games, years. too. Yeah, finally. That's awesome. Yeah. Really, really a cool thing. So just note that if you have an order you want to get from him, it, like the Jim Ward uh, modules from last week, um, you know, the, the, that's 15% off. All right. This is one of the nast This is in the, the G2. That's one of the nastiest monsters there is. At right? Ass, right? Oh my yeah, that's god! On the floor oh, yeah, of the rift, yeah. Oh my gosh! If you are yeah. on the back <laughs> spine of that thing, what's it do? Ten to a hundred? Yeah, there. Uh, it's insane. But yeah. um, they went all out in, the, in these adventures. There's a isn't there a frost uh, 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 a white dragon in the and G two? Oh as yes, well? and, and you know even yeah. those the big wolves and the yeti, they're they're the yeti are a big thing there too. And you're you're up against those. Um, Frost Giants for the next adventure, and oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, and that cave, that cave that you first go to, you know, that you can see, it's got all that stuff in it. I've had plenty of parties dying there, really. It, oh, it, yeah. It's, yeah, isn't there, aren't there people frozen in ice in there too? Or isn't there things frozen in ice? Or am I, am I thinking of a different adventure? I thought, oh, uh, I think you're right about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, it's been something. a long time. Uh, so it's really one thing is strange, Leonard, that. Fire giants are t three foot shorter than frost giants, but they're stronger. So that's pretty interesting. Just the way it was done, right? Yeah, I imagine so. Yeah. Now, one is... of the books that I got in the mail but didn't get to uh, my two cents in was the Monster Man. <clears throat> it just showed up one day. Oh, see, so you have no edits in that, unlike the other books. No edits in that, no. No, not a one. Which book was it? I missed that. Monster Manual. The Monster, oh, the Monster Manual, Manual one. Yeah, yeah. Leonard's in the Dungeon Master's Guide and the Player's Handbook and Arthur Kena, right? Are you in Arthur Kena? I think so. Yeah. I, I certainly have some spells in there for yeah, sure. Yeah, I, I, yeah, that's what. 
you know, I, I love the, the 1E uh, DM's Guide cover art and the uh, 1E Player's Handbook. And then that monster manual was just, my God, it, that was so ugly. <laughs> I, I, You're not I, the first person to say that, Jason. Oh, I, <laughs> um, I, I think it's, um, you know, uh, that, but I'm a big Trampier fan. I love his work, and I wasn't as sometimes. I think the Monster Manual covers Sutherland. And, I'm not right. sure who did that one, but <clears throat> yeah, I, I can't. I can't say it, it looks childish, and and it's kind of from an early. It, it to me, it smells is, 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 is smells of, of of bad budget or low budget. So to speak. you, no, no you know what though, it, it for me, it's like a perfect fit for when it came out. You know, I was young. Yeah. And I was yeah. Back up, I love yeah. it now, you know, but now if I was going to go out and buy it, I would be like. Yeah, it's, it's not like the Dungeon Master's guy, which scared, which is in a freak. Yeah. It's not a which devil. It scared every that. parent. They're like, yeah, holy jeez, what's this? Yeah. That was terrible. Well, it's you know how you game. solve that, don't you? Uh, how do you, you buy how? one of these things? <laughs> Get a nice cover for it? You put a skin, oh. what's it called? Uh, dragon skin. Now, it goes oh, back yeah. a yeah. long, long time. Uh, I never, I they didn't have that. a dragon skin for the DMG. Because it was just a little too big, but all the regular size books you could buy one. That's a smart move, Lynn. I tell you, I wish I'd have had that. I wouldn't have to yeah. been running for my life with my friends from house to house, you know, from the. Jason, I like a minute to talk about critical hits. All right, yeah, we'll take that way off. Let's, the, let's so, do it. Yeah, as you recall, the Dungeons and Dragons system is not hit location. Yep. Okay, so therefore. My attitude was, if you roll a natural 20, and there were cases where you could roll a natural 18 or 19, mm -hmm. but let's say 20. You roll a natural 20. Now you roll a second dice to see what happened. And the second dice was related to the damage range of your weapon. Now, you still could add your strength bonus in. You could still add okay. weapon specialization if you had that kind of stuff. But the point was, it was all damage. Generic damage, not hit location damage. So you weren't missing eyes, your lips weren't cut off, your <laughs> ear hasn't been, been, been off. You haven't lost your left hand, you haven't lost your right leg. And it, it becomes really different, difficult when you're doing, what, what was that, uh, the pirate um, who had the peg leg and was playing to be the cook, but then he was really the, the captain. Long John Silver. Yeah. Yeah. Treasure Island, Long John Silver. Treasure Island, yeah, yeah. So, um, me, having a peg leg and trying to adventure is beyond difficult. <laughs> it's a bitch. Very um, point. And when you break it to them, that's the same. Well, you know, you still have your dexterity bonus when it comes to you firing arrows and crap like that. Yeah. But when it comes to melee, that, which is not a static thing, your, uh, your your dexterity bonus might not be as high as it would have been if you had your leg attached to you. Well, that's not what the rules are. I said, but you have a peg leg. Well, what's that got to do with it? Can you <laughs> run 720 feet with a peg leg? Oh, I don't know. Well, no, you can't. <laughs> So Len, I won't get you upset about all the all the uh, no, that's one right. e and two e edition spells, like because uh, the they added repair injury in second edition, which which fixed all sorts of things like that, oh. and you know we won't even go there. Uh, well, but that's, that's a good point. It's a good point. Absolutely. Now I got oh, my. Uh, that's like regeneration. So regeneration is what sixth or seventh level. Seventh, yeah. seventh level spell. Well, you can't do that at lower level theoretically. Yeah. That's why you never have to worry about throwing it out. <laughs> I got rid of a lot of spells over the years. I won't. I won't deny they just weren't available because it. Yeah. I don't know. If you just you can go. You can have too much. I think. And yeah. I. I. I never used wish. Uh, it was just too too powerful a spell, and it caused too much trouble. Um, but you know, I I got my taste of critical hits. The idea because I was a young player back then. Uh, from the Dragon Magazine article, uh, Roger what Marsh. is it? Critical hits, near misses. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I forgot what that was. Um, 
They were pretty basic, but there were some 40s. nasty ones. Yeah, I think I, that might have been in the forties. No, uh, I think it was a little higher than that. I think it may have been higher than that. But but yeah, it, good. It, it it's where the start. That's where good we hits. started. Yeah, good hits and bad misses. Yeah, I think, I think I kind of started the whole thought. Yeah, rules for wishes, if anyone can. <laughs> I yeah yeah no uh, and or no ands or ors no conjunctions in no your ands wish, or right? ors, no conjunctions yeah. twenty five words or less when you write it down you're going to read it while I'm looking over your shoulder to make sure it comes out with what you said it was or and you can't have any uh, palaver with your your teammates if they open their mouth and give you a suggestion uh, I said well you can't do it now yeah. And, so Straight peer up. pressure within that real fast. So I, I rated a uh, wish at roughly 50,000 gold pieces when it came to items, a magic item. One of the fun ones was uh, some guy wished for a plus three sword and it arrived with the original owner. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Beautiful. Oh, yes, that is great fun. <laughs> it, it isn't as if he just pulled it out of some poor bastard's hand and showed up. Right. Poor oh, bastard is still attached to it. That's funny, though. Oh, they didn't care for that. <laughs> of course, the guy who showed up because of the witch wasn't terribly thrilled <laughs> either. Well, you know, one of the things that was fun with that G series was um, there was always plenty of coin uh, oh, gosh, in these yeah. treasures that you found, and it was like, what are you going to do with it? Because uh, if you were on the mission and you're going from G1 to G2 to G3, um, you know, what, uh, how are you going to take all this coin with you? I thought um, there was a portable hole in here somewhere. Gold, platinum, and gems. Yeah. End of, end of, end of sentence. Leave the copper behind, yeah. Yeah, leave the copper behind, and you may leave the silver behind. And I've had, because it's you've, just always got, you've always got a couple players, those rows. Oh, yeah. They, they want every, leave, they every, leave every freaking coin. <laughs> well, like, one of the things I did was uh, I had... Um, <clears throat> A couple hundred dollars in pennies, real, you know, real pennies that I'd, I'd show to my players. And it'd be like, you know, uh, figure each one of these pennies is like a, a, a gold piece. What are you going to do? You know, like, how are you going to, you know, this is what you have to lug around. This is, uh, you know, a couple um, uh, a couple thousand pennies. This is, uh, where, where are you going to, how are you going to drag this treasure around with you? So, oh. um you know, I always avoided um, the things that made transporting treasure too easy. Because um, I'd like the players to have to figure out what are they going to do with it. they defeat the monster, and then they'd come back to the dungeon and their treasure would be gone. You know, like they had to figure out ways. They'd be uh, dumping treasure down into pit traps to have to retrieve later. Because they knew I would, uh, you know, it would be gone when somebody else, if they didn't get back there quick enough. But yeah. um, oh, I love those G series. But uh, so yeah. Speaking of that, G three has first off the Elder Elemental God ten temple in it, which was cool in itself, right? I mean, that whole temple setting that's oh, yeah. completely separate. Secondly, the Wall of Tentacles appears in this. Thirdly, on this page here, the Epsis is a Clavdra, the first appearance of a Clavdra. Yeah. Oh, and this yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, the Elder Elemental God worshipping a Clavdra, I might say, everyone. Okay. I'm just going to put that out there that one time. But uh, <laughs> she uh, she's in this. Um, also, in the back... Before, two years or three years before, we have Anatar Kena, you have two ninth level spells that make it at first appearance, Crystal Brittle and Energy Drain, which ended up in the Anatar Kena, and they're both ninth level spells, and they're on a scroll in here. So that there, there, so Gary's experimenting with stuff here, right? Yeah. Uh, pre Anatar um, Yeah. And the connection to D1, the, to the Underdark. So when you go through this, you're like, wow. What a unbelievable series, and it's just getting started. You also have got Obni in there. Yeah, Lord Obni, who's a, oh, he's oh a yeah, agent. yeah, cool. absolutely. I mean, think about that. That is a uh, great point, Jason. I mean, he's a, he, to this yeah. day, he's still. Uh, I know Casey's using him in his Salt Marsh campaign. Well, after the Gord novels, he became kind of famous, and and yeah, yeah. 
So there's a ton of great no, stuff. Well, you know, there's a red dragon in that one. And um, there's the illusion of a red dragon. I was just reading somebody's um, comment about their, their play. And their characters, they fought the illusion. And then when they realized it was an illusion, they, uh, when they saw the real red dragon, they thought that was an illusion. Then. Ah. <laughs> and I guess the, uh, yep. the red dragon, Chris, several of their players who were trying to disbelieve. So perfect setup. Did but you... I tell you, when I, um, that was one of the last times I was a player back in Bigger the cool. 80s. Well, uh, for G3, and when we met the Drow, um, that just, that, they were, my friend of mine DM'd that one, and boy, he did the Drow perfectly. Um, you know, like, they, they would, uh, they they attacked and retreated and attacked and retreated, and, oh, it was, it was, we were, they, they were such a pain in the ass, we really... Uh, they were play. They were run for that one. For me, it set my mind on what the Drow were like forever after that, and um, it suckered us right into the D series. And that's Jesus. where we go next. Yeah, you had to keep going. You had to keep going. Um, I'll say this: I want to know if Gary did this, and uh, Len, do you know? And that is. The Underdark map itself with, and then this blank one where you had to fill it out as you went, right? Remember that? You had all those Underdark locations and that mm -hmm. map, and then there was a real map in here. I'm assuming that it's Gary Gygax, and there's the full map, right? And it shows the area that's highlighted and how, how in-depth that Underdark is, you know? I, my guess is, is that, that uh, this was all Gary's creation. Unless, uh, you know, maybe My I'm recollection sure. is the Drow came in as a module at uh, Gen Con. It's the first time we saw Drow. So probably this is uh, Vault of the Drow 78, isn't it? So we're talking... Yeah, that'd be about right. Yes, yeah, so you're talking 77 or earlier, you think? Yeah, it, it was, uh, you know, Bob Blake would run those things and... Okay. I think he would run with 32 players, knock down to 16, you know, that wow. kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, but he would have all those DMs, and he would have this little enclave of, of people, and he said, now, you guys can't do your own house rules because it's going to screw the tournament. You have to follow the book, like it or no like it, because your players are going to have to follow the book as well. So... Everyone went, well, oh, but I like to do it this way. Well, no, it's a turn. Yeah. You can't do that. So, and and uh, I can just imagine being, you know, uh, phew, man, I would have been 10 years old. That would have been, I would have loved to have been there for those uh, those days, man. Because it was probably what, Gen Con was what, 2,000 people maybe at that time? In the, in the uh, mid-70s? I don't know when, when, when. When Blake came in, I don't remember what his first year was at all. And I don't know if Bob Blake, if Blake is still around, alive, I should say. I, I just don't know. Um, he was very, very good DM. He would say, <laughs> he ran into the same problem with TSI that I would run into. You'd give them the material, they'd have it for five or six months, you're getting ready to run it, and then they tell you what's wrong. <laughs> As opposed to, you've had it for four or five months. Well, they did that to me. I, 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 I designed a few of the, the modules for the, for the tournament. And I gave them the preliminary at the prior Gen Con. I handed it to them. I said, here's what I'm going to do. You know, the ship is going to come from here to there, and it's going to land here, and then you're going to have this chase, and then you're going to have a wyvern that takes away the guy, and you're going to have to chase after that. Yada, yada, yada. And I had it laid out as to what I was going to do. I didn't have numbers to everything, but I knew what I wanted to do. They had it. Okay, now, when I'm getting ready to prep the judges for the module, the first module, the uh, crossing the... Uh, a section of ocean or, or 
some bay or something, get from one side to the other. I said, well, no, no, you can't do that because they said, you've had it for a year. What's the matter with you? I said, I'm getting, I've given them the prep. I've sent it to them in the mail. And that's what we're going to do. But no buts. You've had it. This is the way I'm going to do it. Well, I can. So do you want me to go get Gary Guidance and put it in here and tell him <laughs> which end is up? Because you called the heat down. You, you called the heat down on him. That's yeah, awesome. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> when I did L1, somebody rewrote the damn thing. Yeah. Now, I'm going to I'm going to say this, and I might very well be wrong. It might have been Lawrence Schick. I'm not 100%, 100 sure. sure. Positive. Okay. So I get Gary on the phone. I said, what the hell is this? This isn't my module. And he said, oh, well, let me, oh. And then it came out my way, not his way. Well, TSR is a little bizarre in, in coping with them. They always have been a little bit bizarre. It's Chuck, Chuck, uh, uh, make sure you don't do that to Len, please. Don't wait, don't wait a year. We don't do that to anybody. <laughs> we don't have time with you. Well, I can't all take back from the grave. It goes through proofreading and editing, and man, it's on its way. If people have complaints, they can just, well, they do. They can talk about our stuff all the time because we don't change it. So that's a good story. Um, so uh, yeah. Gitano has brought something up in chat that I did not know that um, – was as amazing. Hey, what's up? What's up, Rob Phantom? Good to see you. Uh, night, the descent um, was first name Lich called Asbirdes. Remember that Lich is just lying there of all the magic mouse. Ah, yeah, I didn't know. So they changed Asperdy the name of it. Isles. But, yeah. yeah. Uh, and then uh, Tomb of Horrors with Asara came out uh, later in December later that year. I did not know that. Um, hey, what's up there? Yeah, look at that, Jimmy. Look at that. Uh, Chuck is on here with uh, with Len and Jason and me and Anna, and we're having a great time. So it's good to see yeah. you. Good to see you all on. Um, I did not know that, and that was a really – that was just a crazy – you go into this hall, you go into this cavern, and there's just crap. There's bugbears. There's there's gargoyles. There's just <laughs> trolls. There's just shit everywhere in that, in that D1. I mean, it was a – that talking about uh, a hack oh fest. yeah that was yeah that was yeah, deep well, you know and, and you noticed how um di you know it's very tournamenty if you look at the the module um and it only follows that uh, narrow map that you see and it always was there was one big encounter and two small encounters right uh and uh, that one uh has the big chamber um, and I forget what the two small encounters were, but like on the map, you see there's a big, big encounter, two small encounters, and then D2, the same thing. Uh, and then D3, D3 is just... It's unique. I, I mean, it's the vault of the drow. That's such a big thing. Yeah. Um, and, um, but, you know, like each one featured a di different aspect. There was just, those were such incredible module and then if you looked at what you could do with the underdark setting that there was a, the only thing that always got me about that is how two-dimensional it was uh, yeah, when yeah. you really have this three-dimensional setting you know it's like um you know that like like your roof is somebody else's floor and your floor is somebody else's roof and uh uh you know like like it it should be like a big three-dimensional like things should be moving up and down and not necessarily like just um like you're doing just one level in an office building but yeah, like true. you're doing this whole world of things that are big and small um uh, that not you know things that are at, at different heights and uh that are like these caverns if you've by me there's these uh crystal caverns uh out here on the east coast yeah and um yeah. there i've been there when I was a kid, and they were fantastic. Yeah, like Luray Caverns and the Crystal Cave and all those near yeah. where we all live, absolutely. Chuck, were you going to say something? Oh, it looks like he's talking to someone else. Len, I know you got to go in uh, five minutes, so uh, what would you like to say in closing before you have to depart tonight? Well, for the audience, if anybody wants the uh, results of that, the, the building and all of that, they, they just write me at liamendadeoil.com and I'll send it to you. Awesome. Uh, I don't know how many people followed that thing. Um, 
but I've decided that it's got to be magic items and spells and what have you. Yeah, you pique more interest. Well, hey, you know, you gave it a shot. Lesson learned, too. Yeah, uh, on yeah, that. yeah. Live and learn. So, Wednesday night, I, I just did this ahead of time before Len uh, has the part. Wednesday night's Legends of Lore is going to be fantastic. Circle of Eight and other great spellcasters. So, there you go. So, we're going to talk about Liam and while Len's on, on Wednesday. And then we'll yeah. talk about the Circle of Eight. And just remember, it's not the Liam and of... Who oh, I was. So we talk about the real. It's what somebody else wrote as being. Liam. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we want to. Well, we want to. We want to talk about um, Liam and spells, and then talk about your Liam and in Earth Journal Ten that you wrote, right? Right. So we're going to yeah. talk about that. Mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely, we'll give you. We'll give you all your time you want on while you're on uh, to discuss your your version of Liam and absolutely. Lens day. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it's going to be a great yeah. show. Uh, and then maybe we'll get into Rari. We'll get into Miracle the Chaotic. There's a lot of great, oh, we have to have crazy. Oh, man. Chaotic. oh yeah, yeah, it's absolutely. A, a lot of really cool thing uh, things on that. I was just showed up pictures to my wife the other day and was just showing. I said, "Look at this guy running through the streets." Yeah. Yeah, That's a beautiful piece of work what, right there. It's an iconic picture. It absolutely <laughs> is an iconic picture. All right. So a lot of people said they didn't like D2. D2 was color tone. It seemed to be just thrown right in the middle. And, you know. Oh, oh I adored You adored it? Oh, that's good to hear, oh, Jason. My God, I thought that was wonderful. Okay. Okay. I was just saying, but from the chat, Extort's got a question for Chuck, which I'll get to, too. But go ahead. So um, what, what, uh, tell us what you liked about it. Well, D2, I mean, the... You open up this whole new race, and they were distinct. True, um, true. And uh, you know, it was just—I thought it I thought it was a fan. I, I honestly liked D two much better than I liked D one. Okay. Uh, and um, you know, I just thought that the Katoans were a wonderful addition. I, um, you know, to me, they were, and they—they they never picked up like the Drow did, but. Uh, to me, you've, you've like introduced it, yeah. a whole new civilization and race, and um, I, I really did a lot with the Kuatoans. Uh, I, I just absolutely loved the, the uh, D2 adventure. Um, but, it, it, you know, it was mostly for the addition to the, to the setting, and um, that, was, that was absolutely fantastic. Now... I that's when I started uh, running adventures mm -hmm. uh, back then uh, with the D modules. That's my first crack at them. I had been a player, and then I got uh, pretty much ran nothing but a, as a DM for the next forty years. Um, but with the D modules, D two, um, the group that I was running was entirely enslaved, uh, oh, cool. and the Katoans sold them off to these. Uh, um, we, I created this whole series of these uh, fighting estates, a la Spartacus, um, for right. the Drow, mm -hmm. and uh, they, the, the, for for a long while, the players were uh, uh, slave uh, gladiators, and they caused this uh, big gladiator rebellion, um, and um, that, you know, that took off from. But that's an example of one of the things is when you can overwhelm the characters. You don't need to end the adventure, you know. Um, you know, like your first level characters run into a dragon, and the dragon enslaves all of them. You know, the dragon likes having a, a handy uh, servitor and a snack. You know, and so they have lots of slaves. So your first level characters can run into, you know, like a dragon and keep the adventure going. But I loved. I mean, that of course is where I broke off from. It really was my first big work on creativity cool so len i uh, love d2's a favorite module of mine well the, listen here's some unique items in d2 shields of glue on them right remember to get, get stuck to the shield that was that was unique man catchers they use that was a unique uh, weapon the monitors the sorry skagath the koatoan monk like creatures that was new right yeah, i mean that was yeah yeah, yeah. yeah, so um, they, it's a very they, creative module with lots of new cool stuff. So yeah, yeah, and, and may I add, man catchers yet again, man catchers. Oh yeah, <laughs> they they yeah. made their debut there. Yeah. They're coming at you, you know. Like, What's yep. going on? Mm -hmm. uh, true, true, true. It, it's a lot of really cool things. 
Um, I, I know a couple people have mentioned maybe out of the three that didn't like it, but there you go. Um, the co uh, so in my world, Cotillons are, are breeders of the Murlocs because they annoy everyone. So and there, Len had to go, and so oh, we'll see. Len. We'll oh, see. Well. We'll okay. see Len yeah. on. We'll, we'll see Len on Wednesday. Um, yeah. Maybe. We better, okay. All right, so uh, here's a question uh, real quick, Chuck. Extort asks, recently ran across some of the Gagaxian Fantasy World books in PDF. Any chance GLG will republish them? Well, um, and I think Jay probably knows the answer to this already. But, uh, you know, um, currently no one's allowed to redo anything because of uh, the family, the way it sets legally. You know, we had so much stuff ready to just roll out to the printers and the day i mean literally just days before it was supposed to be published we've got it got pulled from us but we have every intention of republishing and continuing to publish all this stuff that we have once we get the green light from um, whatever happens with between the kids and the wife and all that i'm not really into all the the specifics of all that but i know there has been some recent discussion on it. I, we, we, we would hope, I mean, we would love to be able to continue his legacy. You know, he, he wanted us to, we did it for as long as we could, you know, until he passed away and, um, oh man, it would just be something awesome to do. You know, we would just, it would just be amazing. You know, There's... what about, um, are yeah. you allowed to reprint the crusader magazines? We have them on PDF and on the site, they're on there. Um, and, I, I, you know, I mean, it's one, it's the uh, Gygax. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of good material in each Crusader. Yes, uh, there Those is. early ones, but the Gygax, and then if you like the uh, Zagging stuff, there's <laughs> at least three uh, issues that have uh, Jeff Talanian uh, yeah. expanding on the, um, um, uh, I've, I've just recently we, stolen ideas from one. Yeah, we, we, um, that's a good, that's a very good question. Uh, you know, I'm not real sure when it comes to that. I mean, I think we are allowed to. I mean, we've got them up for PDF. Uh, it's something that we're just kind of afraid to do in print till we get some better permissions, I guess. Like, originally, in our original um, uh, oh, uh, quick start rules, the original adventure in there was from Yearsburg, you know, and we had to pull that, obviously, you know. Um, at one point, we weren't allowed to do have any hint of Zagi. And, but we're hoping that's going to change in the next couple of years. It's going to loosen up. We, we're really... You know, I, I can't say it's going to happen because you don't know, but we really want it to. And you know what's funny about that is every show that we have on Twitch, someone's always asking about that stuff. Always. It does yeah. not fail, you know. Um, so, yeah, I, it would be, be amazing. That's a good question, Jason. I'll tell you what, I'm going to ask. I'm going to ask Steve and Tim about that. I'm not sure about that stuff because that's, you know, I'll go back and see. Maybe there's some missing issues on the store that I didn't notice. I just know there's a bunch on there. Well, like um, issue 12 of Crusader has Bogged Down at Castle Zaggy by Jeff Tulanian. And uh, that is a nice little uh, a nice little scenario idea um, that's in that issue. I think there's only three issues with uh, Zaggy material. Um but a lot of issues have Gary Gygax's How It All Happened. Yep, it's all in there. We've got them all. I'm looking right now. They're in there. So you can and, get them uh, all yeah. so yeah. One more thing real yeah. quick, Chuck. Uh, Canadian yeah. asked you about postage to Canada. I know it's a t difficult situation. I mean, it's... Just... Oh, man. I, we have a lot of... Well, we, we have problems with you know, Europe, too, as well. But, yeah, we have a lot of people, in that, like a lot of guys in our Discord, Strangely, several of my moderators are from Canada, and they're always having problems with that. We're trying to find a way around that. We're looking for a distributor right now that we can use that'll be a little better. Because I tell you what, the, the uh, shipping on that is brutal. It really is. It's brutal. Yeah, but people need to go PDF. I I resisted it at first, but I'll tell you the way things are. Um, you know that is something to do uh, is to go PDF. Well, um, one thing you have to watch out for, especially since we're talking about old modules, but back to TSR, is there's this new thing where people are buying um, yeah, drive-through yeah. print-on-demands mm -hmm. uh, for a, a song. EBay. They're a wonderful price. And these are printed out books. Yep. And they're selling them on eBay for collectible prices. Yeah, which is wrong. And... and, and, and the, the stuff on drive-through, I will say, it's gotten better with the printer demand. We 
we uh, we're working on an actual project with them right now to do all of our stuff, our older stuff that's out of print that way. And it's not they're they've got gotten a lot better. But Jason's right; you got to be very careful about that. Very yeah, careful. they're they're referring to it all, trying to avoid telling you the reprints, um, and uh, some just don't. Uh, and I'm a big uh, anti person. I run a um, Facebook page, and I'm always trying to tell people go through drive through if you're going to go for these print on demands. Do not buy. Don't get ripped off. Yeah. And and uh, like there's a toy that just came out with a little. Uh, their die cast, and there are these little die cast um, miniatures. One of them's a beholder. One of them's a red dragon. Uh, and you can get them from Walmart um, for nine forty two for the Beholder set, and on eBay they're selling for thirty or forty a pop. Wow! Just, you got to be smart about looking for things. It really hurts the collector with the drive through reprints being posted. Um, but, I'll, yeah, I'll say, but, yeah, yeah, that's really a big thing of mine. Is I, I hate seeing that. It's it's not doing the hobby any good to have all these um, people and look at drive through if you, and and if you want to play copy the the Greyhawk stuff I just picked up the folio uh, the the 1980 folio Greyhawk folio um, and it is like nine dollars yeah. um, and it is wonderful it's it's you know it doesn't have the mystique of the original copy it's, but it's very useful to have everything in one go and the map is chopped up in the back. Yeah. Now it's not as as handy as having. It's not as beautiful as the big print, but it's nice to have it, you know, in the book, so you don't lose yeah. it. For a reference too, you know. Yeah. All right. So the ever mysterious Tim has hopped on the chat here and asked if we've talked about Vault of the Drow yet. We really haven't even gotten to it yet. Right? Oh yeah. 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 Okay. yeah. Now let's say a couple things. I'm going to do this again. I do this every time I show. I tell. I, I say this. This is your Bible. For how you play Drow and Greyhawk, you do not use the Menzo Barons and box set. Every Drow oh, and Greyhawk is, is not Drizzt <laughs> Duodin. Do you understand me? Okay. All right. I'm sorry. I knew this was coming. I knew this was coming. <laughs> okay. Drow, most Drow are like regular elves and stuff. They fight with a buckler and they fight with one weapon. They don't fight with two weapons. Every single Drow. Number one. Number two. There's a society. Uh, there, there's a structure in here. They're not all psionicist. Uh, come on, guys. This is this book is this is all <laughs> this is all you need. I'm sorry if I sound like an asshole. This is all you need for Greyhawk Drow is this book. This book has yep. everything that you need to know about the Drow in it. Okay, there you That's go. That's what I'll, I use it for. Any I'm off my soapbox so. now. All right. I don't so. know what something is. That's what I use. Yeah. We don't even have. You know, technically, we don't have drow because of copyrights, but we have dark elves. Right, right. And yeah, yeah. Right oh, oh, we have a special guest coming on, and it's yeah, we have another special guest coming on tonight. I said that in the thing, we're, uh, the ever mysterious Tim is doing. There he is. Hey, hey, Tim. <laughs> He's still connecting the audio. So, yep. just they have a drow male and female fighter society in here. Use them as the templates for your fighters. Okay, go use the families for how priests priestesses and mages are used uh check out arohai sinlu the write-up in here about arohai sinhu is amazing okay it doesn't go into the detail that that article uh, that cold was talking about uh, does but that just it's so cool you get a picture in your mind because ha everyone has to wear those yellow cloaks or whatever i mean you, it, you can see it in your mind that this, the way it's written up so i know joe block worked on some stuff for arrow of sinew and Alan Grow, I believe, was working on the city as well. Yeah, I, I, I'm. Uh, I think Joe finished his, and it's on one of his posts. I think he did it a few months ago. Actually, he, he actually finished it. So, Tim, hi. How are you? Hi there. Hey. How, how you doing? Oh, Tim. Good. Good. I uh, when I saw on the announcement tonight uh, that Jay put on the Discord and had the purple d3 uh, module on it and i was like uh because <laughs> that uh <laughs> significant you know that that module if you mess with it or played it either running it or run through it parts of it because I, I don't think there's anybody who runs through all of it no it, 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 it is a significant emotional event uh, yeah. in your in your in your gaming life if, if there is such a thing 
That's true. <laughs> Plus, you know, like all these old modules, it's so so great about them is that you can run people through them and you do it different every, every each time. So if someone has to do group, they're like, "Oh, I've done this." No, you haven't. No. And I I love the the attitude of of D three is so cool. As you enter that vault of the drow, there's the black tower. Yep. And the black tower is is they get to this thing where if you do not leave the black tower, um, which is this uh, 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 fort fortification that guards the entrance to the vault, if you stay too long, the 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 the, the module tells you, well, just tell them you died uh, gloriously, <laughs> because uh, you know. You're gonna you're you're gonna get stuck there, and all the drow in the world are gonna come and kill you. Um, so there was this movie called Warlord with Charlton Heston. Mm -hmm. All right. Yes, I remember. There he was, was a Norman. He was a Norman, right? Yes, and the, they did. Um, there was this modeling company that did models of famous uh, movies, and they did a model of uh, in. Um, a uh, 58 millimeter scale of the of the warlord tower and you can take it apart and it's 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 meant to, uh, it has these vikings and these normans and a, a village and you can do the siege and so i use that as the black tower in uh, many a convention where i ran this death scenario where your players attack the black tower and then the, the scenario is these troops just start marching on you and you hold it as long as you can till you're overcome and killed. And that is how many of them you kill, how long you last is how you won the tournament. Oh. Uh, you weren't meant to survive. It was the glorious death promised in D3. That, um, um, that power, it's my, my sole wonderful piece of... Um, <laughs> of miniature gaming material and it is just it's beautiful it's the it is it's one floor short it's only uh four uh three stories in the roof uh in the warlord tower but it is it? perfect oh yeah yeah, yeah it's, that's, that's it's handy. you should it's, email you should email me a picture oh yeah yeah i'll, I'll look it up Please. it's still it's not made anymore I but know, um yeah, that'd be cool it's Conti. I don't know if you know that manufacturing, uh, that miniature company. I don't, but uh, do. I'd love to see it. But, oh, yeah. But anyway, I mean, that was just... But the whole of D3 is just... It is just fantastic. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to ask Tim this question. Pick something that's in there. Watch Mentally Projecting. What am I thinking about? It's an item. It's an item that's in D3. The old module D3. Mm -hmm. Did I love Raider Tentacle Rod? No, because that's in that's that's in that's in the G. That's, in, that's in G. Swing and a miss. Swing and a miss. Oh come on, man! One of my favorite items that I used. Oh, 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 oh I'm Deathlands. Yes, my bad. My bad. the my Deathlands. Bad. Bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was getting ready to ask. Is that not the first? I may be wrong. Isn't that the first module that had lizard mounts in it? Yeah. Fancy yeah, subterranean. I mean, you may have seen them as a wandering monster in D1, D2. With a yeah, troop, but, but, but they yeah, like and, detailed them out in there. Right? Yeah, they had this, yeah, the monitors, the subterranean monitor the lizards, monitor, right. which wouldn't attack you unless you attacked them, but the mm -hmm. drow were riding on those, especially the nobles. Um, right. it, absolutely. And, and the really good ones would have it. It was a spear. A death lance is not a lance. It's a spear. And, uh, and and when it hit it critical, it would train one to four levels. Uh, so oh. it, it does it does three to it's twelve. Death. It does three to twelve. No, it does it does normal damage plus three to twelve negative right drain uh, right. on your hit points, and then you get back half, I think, or something like that. Mm. Or, or they don't get back any. I forget. But yeah. on a critical, it would drain one to four levels, and I just uh, so I give them out once in a blue moon in my campaign. For, oh, I love them. Love, How do you give them out to them? As, as opponents, or you just actually give them to them? Oh, well, um, one of Alan's characters it. has a death lance from a drow oh, he yeah. killed. Wow. You yeah. have to kill the wielder first. Yeah, it's <laughs> yeah, a spear. <laughs> so, uh, oh, love it. Cool. Love it. Yeah, man. Oh, so, I mean, we, the memories yeah. we all have. Anna, have you ever, uh, the D series ever touched a bottom uh, at well, all? No, I've, I've read through them, yeah. but I haven't touched them as is. No. Okay. <laughs> or, or run them it, as is. But I've taken a lot of inspiration from them. 
Oh man, just <clears throat> unbelievable. Uh, uh, one thing to this day, there's the eight noble houses are in mm -hmm. here. Right? Yep. Yeah. Two weeks ago, uh, in my uh, um, deep streams, uh, uh, trouble with deep streams, they fought uh, two dark elves from uh, the eighth ranked house, Alaval. I use these names. They're the only eight I use in my campaign and based on ranking. And there's always that internal struggle. I still have that struggle between the um, elder elemental guy and Loth going on in my campaign to this day. And that's just, yep. it, it's, it's a fun thing. So, uh, and uh, it is it is a cool, yeah. Oh, is that it? Is that an image of it? Let me see. Uh, Katana linked it. Oh, wow. That's nice. That's a nice piece there, Jason. Oh yeah, it's it's beautiful. It's that's beautiful. Nice. It's nice. Yeah. That's cool. It's a painted foam, you know. Yeah, but still, uh, it gets the job done. That's really cool. Oh, yeah, and it, it comes apart. The side view uh, comes out, and uh, you can easy, also take it apart. So each level is, um, uh, you you know, you can split it apart so you can play on each level, um, either as a tower or uh, separately break the pieces down. Uh, each floor comes apart. It's, it's a wonderful, wonderful. And... If you're a fan of Warlord, like I am, that that Heston movie, I am. Um, it's great. Jason, I have a character I named after Boris, his bodyguard. He uses the big heavy mace. Oh, that's really? I, yeah, that's how much I like that movie. I did, that's <laughs> awesome. That's Richard Boone in the movie. Oh, really? Yeah. I, I mean, he was so funny because I remembered him originally from, you know, uh, Paladin, Have Gun, Will Travel. But <laughs> so. Now, uh, I, I did want to say one thing. Go for it. This is not uh, an old module. It's Sergeant's, and I love Sergeant's Adventures because okay. I remember him from Games Workshop. His he was great then. I'm not fond of. Uh, I dislike his work on Greyhawk as a setting, but Night Below meshes. Yeah. It Night Below is an Underdark campaign for the most part, and it meshes perfectly with the D series. So that if you're running uh, the D series, you can play it side by side with Night Below. You can create one big campaign area. Here's a question: Is Night Below referenced anywhere on Anna's map due to locations? Yes, Anna. Where is it? It down in Jomery, southern uh, Jomery. Oh, okay, okay, great. Yep. So it's near Kendall yep. Keep and everything like that mm -hmm. too, in that whole area. Is it the Passage of Slurton area, or is it? Oh, yeah, not far from it. Yeah, okay. Very close. All yeah. right. Well, that's great to know. So uh, I've never run Night Below. Never oh. done. It's good. Oh, you really need to look into it. You know, like I was saying about the um, uh, the drive through mm -hmm. um, drive through does, uh, I think, a hardcover version of Night Below. Okay. Uh, and um, it, it is a, it's so cheap. I mean, it's, it's like 20 bucks. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's a print-on-demand. Um, and, uh, you know, Night Below the Box set's now getting up to 100, 120. Uh, and there's so many pieces to it because it had little counters you could cut out and handouts and all these things. And very easy to get incomplete sets. So that, that drive-through version is wonderful to get. Awesome. Awesome. I'll, I'll take a look at it. Hey, Irish Dad, good to see you back, man from uh, Thursday night and thank you for going on our discord on virtual Grailcon and on the cannon fire discord too. Um, like, so less, less discussions on the, the D series at all. Anyone want to say well, anything? I, it, it's, it's very, it's not a big thick packet of papers. No, it's you not. Could, you could run a whole entire campaign as an escape slave or a humanoid or demi human and just trying to survive down there. And I mean, there's enough material for you to easily run something like that. Oh, and, Lord, uh, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and, and if, it, I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, <clears throat> isn't, um, isn't, <clears throat> excuse me, good Lord, isn't D3 the thickest out of all of them? Oh, yeah, at? yeah, absolutely. And it's not that it, thick it, at all. all. I mean, look right. at it. It's not right. Compared to D2 and D1. Yeah, yeah. And actually, the oh, D3. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, the, the, the G <laughs> and D1, D2 are paper. I mean, it's, those are just a handful of pages each. Not counting yeah. the handouts and maps, it's 25 pages. Yeah, I just tell you, it's almost like a source book almost. You know? Yeah, for, for its time it was. Yeah. And like I said, I got a copy, I got, I got a nice old copy. And the, where the vault, I mean, down. it contains an entire drow city. That's right. You yeah. know, I mean, that's yeah. the big drow city. There's, 
there's only one other city mentioned, Drow City mentioned in uh, the published material that I've looked at. There probably was more in later Dragon Mag Mags uh, that might have mentioned more uh, Drow Cities, but this is the big city. Yeah. Um, and uh, besides all the houses, and, yeah, it was you a, know, it's, it's a template, you know? Yeah, and Absolutely. it's not a uh, static area. You know, this is the center of trade and all these things going back and forth, and uh, it's the center of all these houses. It's it's not all the drought, but here is their capital city. Here are the major houses. Um, it is it is a big important place for the drought. Is the vault of the drought? And in the city makes the city state look very tame. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Absolutely, man. Since you have Absolutely. all the Nicodemus wandering around. Yeah, oh, and Mezzo out. and Nicodemus. <laughs> right. uh, right. yeah. uh, I just was like, oh, these good. are gross. Yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, just suck you by and just, it's not good. Oh, yeah, they had a name one in there. I can't think of her name now and her lover. Yeah, she, it was a, she was an encounter on the on the, uh, the succubus. trail, one of the trails. Yeah, succubus and a, va and it was a vampire. It was a succubus yeah. and a vampire. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Um, that is not a good couple right there. No. Uh, definitely it was a was a, a blast from the past here. So um we won't talk about Q one. I don't I just don't think it's not memorable enough. I mean Oh, oh uh, how can you say that? I knew that was coming from Jason. Q one, I thought you hated Q one. Well Q one as a, it was an incredibly disappointing result. It was like that wild, wild west movie. You know, down to the big spider at the end. Yeah. Um, no, that that is, is disappointing. It's the uh, demon web. Uh, it's all those little worlds. That oh, the world thing's great. Oh my god, that I agree. completely that derailed um, my my first campaign. It was like two years, two and a half years of gameplay, all derailed by the demon webs. Um, we love that so much. We never got that. The, my players never wanted to go confront Loth. They were busy going from one world to another, having a great time. Um, those worlds, um, oh, they're they're fantastic, and it's it's a real oh, take I agree on that. from uh, DeCamp and Pratt's Harold Shea. Um, you know, um, yeah. one world's the Fairy Queen. Uh, another is a. Uh, uh, this this the dying frozen world. Uh, Norse oh, mythology. The one's Norse mythology. Yeah, and and there is an endless possibility with the demon webs, and that is the good thing about Q one. Give you, I'll give you that absolutely. Um, yeah, it's an early planner thing. It's just it just my, oh, blows your mind, you know. Yeah, so, all the gates to other worlds. Hot, right? You know, well, and how it is not that hard to fall off. No. Yeah, that was true. All those webs and all that. I mean, there's there's so many new spells now that would pushing people and knocking people 10, 15 feet. It is a da it would be a dangerous place that because yeah, you get lost in that in the maelstrom. I think it was called. Yeah, you just will plummet forever. Forever. We 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 did uh we did a lot of sub campaigning uh, in Sayer CD, which was the one with the. Uh, um, the elves were evil, and the dwarves were holding out, you know, and 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 all sorts of. We, we the elves did, were called the Pharisees, right? Yeah, for, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and uh, we did a whole bunch there's of. Some, there's sub, some crazy stuff in there. Yeah, really? sub campaigning in the, in that area of, of, in fact, one of the original first edition Order of Yulik members was named Cedric. He was a uh, fighter mage who came back and left. Uh, and 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 joined up, uh, saying he did not want to be a uh, part of the evil uh, empire anymore, and came back to uh, Earth. And uh, you know, that was one of the things we learned uh, did from that. I'm just saying, Jason, it, that it had some great things in it, but the the whole the robot it reminded me of uh, the Wild Wild West thing with uh, uh, the 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 spider. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, that yeah, movie, yeah, that movie yeah. is just uh, so. I don't so know. that's yeah, it's a disappointing ending for uh, what a wonderful series. Yeah, um, yeah, I have to agree. Yeah, if you take the <clears throat> if you take the web stuff out and just the initial, it's like kind of like meh, you know. <clears throat> yep. So all right, we got but through two whole sets of modules there. Look at all this is a stack still. Look, I got the three point five. Oh, well, look what's on top of it. Look what's on top of it. Oh yeah, what, look what's on top of it is is. It's one of my favorites. All right, Chuck, you're on. Let's talk about it. To the <laughs> Lizard King. 
Oh, uh, I think I was telling you the other day in a conversation, I, I typically like to run that with Baltrans Beacon, and okay. I run them together. Yep. They, they initially go into the swamps after the, you know. They're the, close the to each other. Light. Yeah. Yeah, and what I do is, is I have the <clears throat> the lizard men are worshiping this light, and obviously they end, the, the characters will end up realizing there's a cult that's down here, and they think it's humans, and it turns out to be lizard men. And anyway, but that adventure there, man, I tell you what, I, I – I was, I guess what stuck with me the most about that was when you're, when you're first reading it, you know, I can still remember back when I first read that. I don't know how old I was, what, 12 years old, 14, whenever it came out, that he's a vampire. It is mind blowing because you never would have thought about you know, combining that, you know, it's the lizard man. And it just, I don't know, that just set the whole adventure for me. I, it could have been crap and I wouldn't have cared knowing that he was in there at the end, you know, but uh, uh, it's really for me, it's really a good representation of the old school stuff. The old, there's such a good flavorful module that can be done that doesn't take you 2,000 years, but it's still got a, a sense of adventure to it as far as you're trying to fight evil. But there's also a little bit of, you know, looting going on and that kind of thing. It's just a good story, you know? It is. Um... Yeah. And I don't want an undead lizard king with a, with a black dragon. I think there's a. Um... Isn't there, uh, uh, what's the, uh, demon that can kill you via, via sight, uh, Tim, that's in Shokanth? Isn't there one of those in here, too? Oh, God. A Kazmi? Not a Kazmi, no. Uh, what is the uh, module number? What's the, uh, uh I2. I2. I too. Okay, thank you. Ah, shoot, I can't I'm trying to think. Uh, the one has the hook on its head? Kind of, yeah. Oh, shit. I can't see. Now you know I'm getting old. Um, yeah, it's, uh, uh, well, there's, you know, there's all sorts of things in this. This is not, uh, levels five to seven, I think is a little low for this. It to, is. It's, to, it'll, it absolutely is. That's why honest. I run it with Baltrons and kind of give a reason for pumping it up a little bit. Absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Is Baltrons uh, by Frank? Uh, you know, I, it, here, I have it on Who here, in here. I, I just, oh, um, I, I, it's on my wall of fame, so I didn't take down any of my wall of fame ones this time. Uh, I'll be right back. Because uh, Baltrans wasn't initially a um, Greyhawk module, uh, but it's been, you know, uh, it's it's now been uh, um, considered Greyhawk. It should be it's kind of um, typical. They shoot I seven by yeah. Philip Myers. Is that saying? No, then it's not the. I'm trying to think that when, if it's not Baltrans Beacon, then what? Huh. Because there was um, an adventure in Polyhedron. I, I thought it was Baltron's Beacon, but maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, now Baltron's Beacon had the great artwork. It has, is that an Elmore on the front? I look, think so. Yeah, yeah like that's Elmore. Elmore. I can, uh, that's I can probably, that. Yeah, I mean, uh, definitely. Um, so combine um, Baltron's Beacon and I2 together. And uh, yeah, uh, Mike is, um, yeah. The black dragon is, just happens to be hanging around. That's true, Mike. Um, <laughs> that, yeah, that is, that is kind of true. Um, now, this is a 1E black dragon, so it's not... Right. You know, it's not as horrendous as it becomes. Oh, my gosh. Oh. I can't believe that I can't remember... Demon. What the is the thing that? What's the thing from the abyss that uh, they have the big the big pole arm? They're standing up. They're all black, and if they stare at their eyes at you, they kill you outright. Oh my god! What are it's they in it's in Shokanth. Yeah. Uh, what 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 did they come out of? What book? Uh, Bodak. Thanks, Mike. Bodak. That's it. Yeah. Oh, uh, oh, Bodak. Oh, oh. Bodak. Yes. Yeah. Bodak. Yeah. I thought there was a Bodak. Thanks, in Mike. Thank remember. you so very much, Mike. <laughs> they had that oh man, showing my yeah. age. Uh, I, I had it the picture of my mind, you know, because they're creepy looking. Love the picture in there too, of Sakatha. So uh, yeah, if, in there. Yeah. yeah. It's not undead. I. Th uh, I th uh, oh, okay, sir. No, I thought it was from I the abyss. I think the um, um, monster manual too. Monster they're Manual, Monster Manual too. Yeah, I thought Fiend at first, but it's not. No, it's the artwork's it's, not right. You it's can from uh, Fiend, the Showcanth, yeah, which we talked about uh, two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, Bo I thought there was a Bodak in here too, but maybe I could be wrong on that. So, Tomb of Lizard King was cool. It, it, you know, uh, put it in, in the top thirty, probably not, but a lot of people. But I just I liked it. Um, I love it. Yeah, it's on my wall of fame. Absolutely. Um, Tim, you got any uh, preference on Tomb of the Lizard King? 
No, but I. Uh... uh oh, he's got his old stuff out. Oh, there ah, you go. Okay. Yeah, there's tomb. There you throw. go. There's tomb. I, oh. I haven't run that in in it 30, 30 plus years. I don't think. Well, it's almost an hour and a half. We got through like three module books for the most part. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. funny. Yeah. We have to have a part three on this. Yeah, the Acid River thing. Yeah, Mike, uh, you're right. There was an Acid River. Yeah. Yes. All right, it was a little hokey. It was. But, okay, it was cool. Like I said, it wasn't top 30, but, it, you know, I always imagine how everything in Monster Manor 2 seemed to come straight from the modules. I Billy, think and that great. was intentional. Go ahead, Chuck. Because no, nobody's expecting a vampire lizard. I'm just telling you, they're not yeah. expecting it. So that's, that makes the whole picture for me because they're like, you know. Tim's got some old, old stuff older than I have. He really does. All right. Ancient. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. That's a good looking one. You got that in good shape, too. He's it's nice. His dad uh, kept a lot of stuff in good shape. I remember when that came in the mail, I ordered it uh, when it first it came out, and I got it from the um, mail order hobby shop. Mm -hmm. With notes with old characters written on little <laughs> pieces of paper still in it. That's awesome. I want to show Tim something that I just found, and he's going to sh shit himself. I, all right. So clench up, let me clench up. Just wait, 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 wait to hear this. Wait, I just found this. All right. So here's the next one I want to discuss, which we missed last time. Ghost Tower of Inverness. Mm. Look at this one. This is a my my good copy is is on my wall of fame. That thing is beat up bad. In fact, it was between this. It was between Ghost Tower of Inverness or Assassin's Knot for the 24th and final spot in our Wall of Fame when we decided that, and we went with this over Assassin's Knot. So just so you see so where they. What's up, DM? I believe Tim. This is a Wizard of Id drawing map that I did in the 80s when I was running it, and somehow it got in here. I believe that's what that is. Yeah, when I I don't know how it got in here, and I'm just like, oh my gosh, it's in here. No, it's I've been going through a lot of my stuff. I got downstairs, and I'll, you'll find all these old mats that you drop we drew. And I'm just thinking, this yeah. is so cool, you know. And you still got this stuff around unintentionally, you know. Yeah. Even better is when you find some stuff that belonged to somebody else. Like you could buy a book, like like Tim was saying, and you'll find like their old character sheets or notes written in the margins, and it's just really yeah. cool, you know. And see, dumb Jay. And this beat up copy has uh, was doing highlights with uh, uh oh yeah yeah I remember that yeah he's a highlighter I'm like uh, not anymore on these things you know I so, like coloring in everything myself <laughs> well, give I me like some it. memories guys memories of Ghost Tower I never I never ran it I, I remember being horrified reading it but I never ran it or ran through it I don't think so. I, my Harby campaign is not as old as my Greyhawk area. And the first group of Harby Irregulars, their ship, they would go down the southwest coast of the Woolly Bay on that side. Oh. And man. during a storm, once, they saw a tower on land. And then lightning a appeared and the tower was gone. And they're like, what's this? So I just ran this. I think it's adventure number. Um, this is a guess in the 700s, you know, early 700s. So put that, what, five to eight years ago, I ran this for a group. And that was one of the, and placed it in the same exact spot it, it is on the map. Uh, and they, cause they finally go, we want to check that out. And they went and they found out the whole story about it. And they actually ran Ghost Tower of Inverness. as it's one of the more recent one, me runnings of a classic module. Um, there's some great, tricks and traps it's a definitely a competition tournament module right um there's different uh you get teleported to weird places in some of these right you do it's like each level is like a different world or something demi plane really almost yeah yeah, yeah. Well, doesn't yeah. It have the one too with the you fall upwards into the water yes uh-huh mm -hmm. absolutely yeah, yeah, it's upside yeah, down totally like oh. i think that's where the fire bat first showed up too if i remember yeah. right yeah it's yeah. there i remember my players I've only ran it a few times. It's been years ago, but I remember I'm like, you know, flipping out because I found, even though the, I remember the module had, uh, like a lot of them, great visual aids, of course, but, uh, yeah. I found a picture somewhere of a bat on fire and showed that instead. And it just terrified the shit out of them. They were, you know, uh, and yeah. there's an Umber Hulk on the, um, the first page on the illustration. So was that in the adventure too? 
Yes. Is that one of the first times that Umber Hulk made it? Ver made very it possibly. This art artwork um, is the same artwork from the Rogues Gallery, too. So whoever yeah, did that yeah. artwork, it's that Rogues Gallery. Isn't that Earl Otis? Is yeah. that Earl, too? Yeah, that's Earl. I recognize it. Okay. A mile away. All right. Yeah. So uh, this... Um, Oh yeah, <laughs> this yes, there it is. It's, a, it's <laughs> yeah. the same female. It, it is on, the, yeah. on, on there. Um, you had to find the soul. You have to find the soul gem. Basically, is what you're looking for in in the ghost tower. If you yeah, haven't yeah. run it, um, give it a shot. Was it random counter, Canyon? I don't remember. Um, I'll take your word for it. But uh, I remember when I did it, they had to fight it. So it was a completely random encounter. It, that's pretty bizarre but uh definitely uh, some crazy some crazy random encounters in here stuff that doesn't belong together which is really neat well i think that's a um uh tournament adventure yeah it was a yep. c series competition it was. C2. yeah yeah yep. now that's a... one you know i should probably look into probably try to run that um you know i was going to run it if you remember we were talking about me running it for greyhawk and then uh con and then uh we changed it up. What did we end up doing on that? I don't even. What for Grailcon? Well, you yeah you. Shadows picked, of the you, Halfling Hall. Halfling Hall. That's right. We picked one of our products. I was yeah. Gonna, I, was I gonna just ran. <laughs> I forgot. Don't worry. It's no big deal. Really. Chuck is know. doing something for Grailcon, guys. <laughs> yeah. Yes, Shadows of the Halfling Hall. Um, yeah, that's right. Well, I'm still going to do this though. I think at some point I want to do it because it's a, it's tournament. It'll be easy to do BTT wise. Yeah, cool. I think I want to do that. It would be fun. Uh, anyway. There's an underwater layer too with zigzactals in it. Did I pronounce that right? Zid uh, how do you pronounce zigzactal? I, I don't know. Is vampire. Not? I call them vampire. Uh, uh, vampire rays. Yeah. Yeah, rays. When yeah. you're underwater, it just sounds like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah that's that's like the Kuatoa. You know, the Kuatoa blib the bloop. You know. Blib the bloop. Oh yeah, pop or something. Yeah. Yeah, it's it, it, Maybe. Yeah. Wow. I bet you that's some sort of like mine or something. I bet you could look that up and it'd be like mine or, or something. You know, yeah. I, they're always doing that kind of crazy stuff. They pronounce the X like they do and the Basque do. So yeah. I'm, get, I'm getting this pile down. It's still pretty big. It's big. So uh, some we've got went over last week. So uh, Chuck, do you got one we haven't discussed yet? Now, if it happens to be one two weeks ago, I'll let you know. But something in old classic. Old classic? Yeah, like the, the, this pile. Um, I still have a couple here. Hmm. I have I have two big series we have not discussed yet. Series. One was reprinted in 5e. Do no, what? One was what? reprinted in 5e in a hardback book and generically placed. Another one um, begins with A. <laughs> begins with a oh man um there we go the slavers modules oh yeah oh yeah yeah those are good all right now you know something about them just as a side note is uh i felt like when i ran that series you have to run all of them at least the first three you know together you know they're not really something you can do i mean you can obviously but they they they're, they fit <laughs> At, together as a series really well is what i'm trying to say i guess i will jimmy yeah, i will yeah tournament you know tournament series i and... promise yeah oh so yeah. Uh, okay mystery i'll give you your two-week vip badge off of that uh, redeeming your free city of altamira citizenship so i will do that so they are they were tournament modules too I remember a was weird with the sundew and all sorts of crazy stuff oh yeah it. a1 yeah yeah, yeah. Oh. Yeah, but, yeah, and the the artwork's beautiful in there, and yep. the aspis that you're fighting, and the uh, what were they half orcs? The half orcs. Yeah, look at oh. that. that's a great picture right there. That is an awesome picture right on the back cover. That is nice. That is, is real. It's got you know it's the aspis. Yeah, this is the first sighting of aspis, and then you have a two uh, assault a three, and then escape a four. You know, and you got Marquesa appearing in these. You know, but uh, so Jimmy, uh, yeah, Jimmy is. Um, if you don't know, Predators Rejects is going to be doing a, sl uh, a Slave Lords adventure for right. Virtual yeah. Grail Con, and I'm assuming you're going to do Jimmy Beyond that uh, with your group, which I'm really excited about. Uh, that you're going to, 
It's good stuff. Yeah, definitely. Um, and now there's A0 with the reprint book. Yes, yeah. uh, yes. Um, yeah, that's right. I did not realize that took on, takes place on the other side, though. I, I, I thought it would took place in blue or something like that. It takes place... No, it's on the, on the yeah. um, Nyron side. Yeah, on the Nyron <laughs> side. <laughs> yep, yeah. yeah, the Nat Marsh, the Dark Shelf. That was one of the later additions to my map when the A0 came out. <clears throat> and the town of Dark Shelf. Is that Danger it? Dark Shelf Quarry is A0. Yep. So... Um, so all right, so you want to know an old adventure we could talk about that's not we've not talked about, and you want to talk about a series? You just want one? No, one. you can pick one because there's a series that's amazing, but we don't have to talk about it. That I, uh, I'll put some plug out for Desolation. I absolutely love that series. But oh, let's do it. We haven't talked about it <laughs> because it's there so different from everything else. It's not medieval. You okay. Know? Yeah. What, what got... series is that? What uh, I three, I four, I five. Okay. Um, which, right. which, when they did the super module, they moved over to the Forgotten Realms. Yeah. Yeah. Did I didn't realize that. Yeah, but, but wow. these are these are these are Greyhawk. So I three, I four, I five, Desert of Desolation, Tracy and Laura Hickman. No, I they're they're not Greyhawk. They're not Greyhawk. Oh no, no. There's I thought no they references. were. I thought they were. No, I don't think there's any Greyhawk references. I use them for Zyph, but uh um I don't think there's any Greyhawk references in them. Anna, they have... were originally written uh, and published um, uh, independently, and uh, um, TSR liked them so much that they bought them. And if you can get hold of those originals, um, uh, they are, you know, they're, they're hen's teeth. But they are like a lot of the other modules, like uh, Ghost Hover Inverness is not a Greyhawk module either from the from the get-go. It's been well, the, when they reprinted it, afterwards. it yeah. It was a tournament. It wasn't, but when they reprinted it, it is Greyhawk actually. Yeah, then they Ghost they Tower. put a reference in. Yeah, they're shoehorning but, but afterwards. But I, I I don't but think. But these uh, are probably not even shoehorning afterwards. That's true. But this yeah. is like I nine in a way. There's no, there's no direct references. But there's nothing that's because it's not set it. in the Flaness. It's set over in uh, the back Lunish area. That yeah. it there's no. In the back Lunish. The 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 I <laughs> oh yes yeah Z. the I one I thought that was done no not I one oh, I, I three four I, I, and five oh okay yeah that, they're that they're Pharaoh right. and um, yeah. that's that really sets Zyphus well yeah you have I nine the day of Al Akbar that's, yeah uh, yeah and, and it's it because it's that's back Lunish it's there's no there's no references that are okay. contradicted you know what I mean it's it's yeah. With I nine, you can use the references in I nine because they don't contradict anything that's in other published material. So, Chuck, what were your memories though of it? Oh man, uh, well, I mean, for one thing, it's not medieval. I mean, it, I guess it is medieval, but it's right, not. Right, right. Not, not European. European. Yeah. Not European. Yeah. And uh, you know, it's it was like one of the first places that I ever took my my guys that was not castles and and dragons, you know, and that kind of thing. You know, okay. talking about the the wasteland, the sand, and of course you got all these new cultures. And of course, I got to really apply the whole. Well, you speak, you know, common, but these people speak common too. But typically, they're just speaking a completely foreign language. I mean, you can kind of do that with different areas around the Greyhawk, but you know, the desert's completely different. And so they were really thrown off guard by that. You know, they were really thrown off guard by the whole thing. You've got the whole environment thing going on. You know, and those modules were filled with all kinds of sneaky curses and traps. That were just just reeked of ancient Egypt, you know, and that and which you know, being a historian, that's one of my favorite things to talk about anyway. Back in the day, and so I loved it as a kid, you know. That kind of, that might have been sort of a precursor for why I ended up going into history. Now I think about it, but but yeah, it, uh, you've got all that stuff going on. It's just um, you've got the you've also got like the politics going on with with the whole thing, and them having to go and get on the the caravan and and going through the desert, and they got to learn. There's a lot of elements to it. It's not just it's just not exploration. It's just not dungeon crawling. You've got all this stuff going on that you can get involved with politically as well as like hidden stuff, you know? Uh, cool. I had a lot of good memories with it. We ran through it. Now, when we ran through it, there wasn't the big the big book at the time. I don't know. Right, right. Honestly, I, I've there. got a copy of that big book, but I've never, I don't remember. I probably paid, flipped through it years ago, but I don't remember if there was a lot of differences. Did they change much? Jason, do you know if they'd change much? I don't know. You know, I, I, I didn't do the super module. And honestly, I didn't really do anything but pillage um, ideas from uh, this series. Right. I love the artwork. I love the maps. 
Um, yeah. There's certain things that are are not my favorite style, and um, I'm also not a super high level um, DM. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, um, Jay, what level are these? Oh, they're not that high. Five, uh, five to seven for the first one, and then seven yeah. to nine. So they're not super high. No. So it goes but from so fifth to nine. There's three in the series. Yeah, from they go from five to seven, yeah. and then seven to eight, and then uh, you know uh, up to yeah, nine. They don't want just a two level thing. Yeah, they only go up to it go from fifth level at the start to ninth level at the end. Wow, it's not too bad. Um, oh, did the Alderon? Okay, thank you for that. He said they just added a few things, fleshed out some ruins. Yeah, but it's got a lot of cool adventure in it. But the whole thing about it is, it's a completely different setting that you could put them in yeah. without having to go to a different world or whatever. You know what I mean? It's, it's a uh, good discussion point because uh, it is a top thirty module of all time, the Desert Desolation series itself. Oh, yeah. And so, but yeah, keyed in with that is the recent. Um, they've recently re-released uh, for five E. Um, module b4 which is not part of the ad and d series but uh that's another one that i use for zyph myself cool um and it there's a lot of interrelating stuff that you can do it's um if that's the i think the lost city yeah it is yep. that's yep. got the guy on the cover with a <coughs> it's purple i can't remember the actual things that got on the cover He's oh yeah very purple yeah. yeah yeah i use um i take from doctor who uh the Pyramid of Mars uh, episode and oh, Sutek, the Destroyer. So uh, I'm taking that B4 Lost Lands and the Cult. Lost City's a top my... 30 of all time, too. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Absolutely. It's in the top 30 of all time list, too. I, 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 I whispered to Gary in Discord to come on. We'll see when he hops on. Um, Chuck, it's a good one. It's a good one to bring up because... Um, I didn't realize it was so setting neutral, but it gives you good memories, and a lot of people yes. loved it. And it also allows you to to explore, like, um, well, just cultural stuff. I mean, you, they've got a lot of, you know, back in the back, I think, in the in the, the mantras, it seems like they had, uh, I don't want to call it like, um, you know, normally you'll have an area that's called new monsters, but these weren't really monsters. They were just different variations of, uh, of humans, you know, culturally, like, I think the uh, the dervish was in there, you know, he's like a no. Oh man. yeah. Yeah. You know, they said so they explored that kind of stuff mm -hmm. instead of just having regular monsters again, you know, and I liked, I thought that was really neat too. It really, it almost creates a whole setting. Honestly, it really does in a way. So, but anyway, that's why I, I really no, have my, my memory a lot. Tim, what do you think, man? What do you got? Well, I, actually one thing, I, as I was looking through the D series and the D2, I found one of the props I had made back in the day. What is that? It was sealed with wax, right? Yeah. <laughs> and then this, the original note was sealed with wax and tied with string. So you had to cut it open. Right? That's awesome. Good deal. And then uh, I think it was a map. So it had map part of the map of uh, the shrine of the Kuatoa. Did so it really? It was, it was some sort of hidden uh, hidden clue you got. So I just found that. I thought that was funny. It's amazing. Oh, awesome, yeah. Uh, look, Gitanus is a classic Tim prop, unlike a tongue tool. Um, Did we talk even... about that already before? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Look what he's holding up there. That's yeah, we, you know what? We, we did. We, we did at, right. uh, with two Mahars, but that's okay. Um, you know, it's so it's the, on the cover of that dragon uh, on that dungeon magazine. The it head. has a lot of memories for me because I actually the only. Well, I think I actually ran it for you guys once. But uh, I also ran it for my grandmother. <laughs> oh, Wow. <laughs> And, uh, you know, she had, you know, she's got the, you know, grandma advantage because, you know, her characters are all awesome. So uh, <laughs> but she, she succeeded in defeating, a, you know, doing it. But I just remember playing <laughs> two Mars, running that for my grandmother. Great. That's awesome. So. I think I Zumba it. went through that with you running it. I think so. So definitely was a uh, a memorable one i'm gonna pull out one here that a lot of you probably are not uh, familiar with too i've much. got one but i'm a, i, I want to share it some other time but there's one that nobody ever thinks about okay we're not going to talk about that now though but, yeah. sounds good but here's this multiple ones are you talking quieter or something? Uh, yeah, Jay, you got very oh, quiet. Yeah, I did it on purpose. You hear me? Yeah. Oh, I'm hearing now. I wasn't yeah. sure if it was or what. Treasures of Greyhawk. If you don't have this, get it. Okay? Yep. Inside are a ton of short adventures. All right? 
and it gives you the level listing over here of all of them. It goes fourth level, sixth, seventh, eighth. They're they're to throw in all the way up to eighteenth. They're to throw into a campaign setting. Most of these are on Anna's map. In fact, we just put Shroud of Kyrene, Kyrene on the map, what, about six months ago, Anna? Yeah, we found when, when we delved into it again. So we found the... Um, yeah. Oh, no, and we found the... Um, and the you have... Castle a, Martin or... Yeah. Martin and, or, his, and, his, and his heraldry, too. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. So you got me to read that one again, and, and I found some heraldry even. That was Here's awesome. the map. Yeah. Here's the map we were talking about. That's, Lord Gregor's map. Yep, there it is. Exactly. Yep. So right I, near Greyhawk. So... Um, Go, wow. yes, go through, get this, whether you get a PDF or you, or you get a copy, because you can sometimes find these reasonably, and if you want a whole bunch of new little cool one-shot adventures with really neat things in it and great magic items at the end of it. I'll, I'll share, let me share a memory with you about that, that particular book. That book was, believe it or not, my first um, exposure to Spelljammer. I hadn't bought oh. Spelljammer. Oh. And then in that book, I remember, because there's a Spelljammer thing in there with those uh, creatures. I can't think of what they're called. Um, Neoji. Neoji. And I was like, what is this? You know, right. I had seen Spelljammer, but just hadn't had the money yet to go buy it. Yeah. And uh, so that was my the first Neoji experience. Nest. It's, the Neoji Nest is in here. It's a seventh yeah. level, page 13. Yep. I remember that so well, because I was just like, wow, you know, this is crazy. I said, I remember... Shortly after that, buying the, buying the series. And you know what's funny about that is, is I went out and bought all the Spelljammer stuff, and then we played it a little bit. <laughs> we played it like I thought we would. We did, we got off on something else, I think. I, I don't remember now what it was. Maybe uh, maybe Dark Sun or something. I don't remember now. So we, back then, you know, everything was coming out. And you're always trying all the different stuff, and, you know. So uh, I'm going to ask Asher's answer his question. The, the tr Book of Treasure Maps is like one half-page encounters. This has some depth to it, the adventures in here. And you can make it a couple sittings if you flesh them out even more. So if, uh, um, it, it's not really, you know, and this was a second edition publication. Jason, do you have these uh, in your uh, is it index? Oh, it's indexed. It's, um, okay, it, good. But it's not, uh, I'm not overly familiar with it because I don't think I've ever run them. By this time, I was really not running, um, I wasn't like really running much of the um, second edition. Um, I think the only adventure from second, I mean, um, like uh, some like WG, the one with the uh, Patriots of the Look and Border Watch, I think we did. And uh, uh, then Five Shall Be One, I know I did because it turned into a massive <coughs> combat against uh, the Orc City. Yeah. Um, Check it out. That's all I'm saying. Uh, get it, even if you get it in PDF, if you haven't looked at it and you want to add a little flavor. There, there are ma there's a dragon encounter in here uh, as well. There's all sorts of cool things. Um, yeah, I, don't, so, so, I don't even have mine anymore. It's long gone in the yeah, waste of time. But. Yeah, it definitely is. It's worth it. Um, all right, so... I'm trying to get uh, Gary's attention there uh, to say to come on because we're running out, running on off on time. Uh, so, uh, which one were you going to state, Chuck, and just see if we if we had if we had it on the? I'm list. actually running it through my through my Saturday group right now. It's uh, Cast Lambert. You know what? That's in the top thirty. Um, yeah, because because you, you have the whole French influence. You yeah, know? yeah, Castle Amber. We were yeah. going. If Gary does get on, we're going to discuss once again. We're going to go back to Isle of Dread and proper oh. placement of it. Just proper placement of it in the map. So, uh, yeah. Ever, ever, proper you... placement? What, what is that? What do you well, mean? there's I Anna this. will tell you. Tell me, Anna. Tell what, me. What, what I'll tell What's you? Problem here? About, about, ca about um, Isle of Dread. We had this discussion. Uh, oh, like... yeah. Isle of Dread is, is kind of, first of all, it it's, go? It's, uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of a shoehorned in afterwards, too, because there is right. a. And, and that is interesting because I don't know how old the Isle of Dread is, if that is actually older than the, the Greyhawk setting or if something that was done afterwards. I'm not really sure, but there is a large island and there's several large, large islands on the, um, not on the Darlene map because they didn't make it onto the Darlene map, but there is a tiny map in the, the, um, the setting book and yeah. they have a large island, a couple of large islands. And then 
these islands got named afterwards. One disappeared from the Darlene map, and that meant I disappeared from my map too, so I need to put it in there. The awesome. other one made it into the Darlene map, so I put it on my map too, and that was named Ruya in, in later uh, uh, content for Living Greyhawk, I think. Oh, I see. And then the, the, so, so the Isle of, of Dread got pushed further south, and then when they did the... Um, uh, Paiso did the the um, or oh, what the, the adventure path they did. Um, um, Savage Tide. Exactly, Savage Tide. Then oh, then yeah. it was placed further south too. Right. So so kind down there. That's it. I didn't know about that. Like that's interesting. I yeah. Mean, so it's, it's kind of a long chain of of things, and I don't know if they're related or if it's just uh, because it might have been that 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 was intended to be the Isle of Dread from the get go. I'm not sure. Well, Isle of Dread started with the. Um... Um, you know, when they split uh, between uh, Advanced Dungeons and Dragons and oh, the, uh, the the Dungeons okay. and Dragons uh, yep. series, um, it was um, it's an incredibly published module because um, the way that B two was in so many uh, starter sets uh, when they did the starter set because back then they did a starter set for all these. Uh, uh, levels of that yep. series, and this was the X series. Excellent. So that was the uh, 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 the experience series, where you were yep. taking a uh, uh, third or fourth level plus characters up in that one. Uh, so Isle of Dread started out. Um, I'm not sure. It might have been one of the ones Lawrence Schick was talking about creating, but it was definitely made for that box set, the one that had the Aerolotus cover. Yeah, you're right. Absolutely. Hmm. And you know, it was it was adventures like that that made us buy all the crap. You know what I mean? You, 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 we didn't just <laughs> it advance, you know. They kept you in all the different rule sets, you know, because yeah. of these great adventures. I mean, I don't even know how we did it back then. I, if I had to think, I, we probably played X. We probably played it at our dread with advanced rules, but we played it, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah. But, you know, I mean I mean, probably the, just kept the same rules, but we just used the module. I don't even remember. But well, the, 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 that was a legal fiction with the um, the, the different series. Although it became yes. much different, it was mostly to deny Arneson royalties from uh, oh, some of the production. Work. That makes sense. That makes complete sense. Uh, so, but Isle of Dread was uh, to showcase wilderness adventure. Okay. Yeah. 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 They had all those survival rules in there and all that stuff. I remember all it. Well, I mean, I, I, I've ran it. I ran it. I converted to 5e several years ago. Your armor rocks too, right? Man, it, took for, and it took forever to get through that thing. I, I think the group was on that island for, for real time, six months, playing every week. It, it embraced, embraced a lot of ideas that they did in their future Gazetteer series where uh, in the known world, Mastara. They detailed each uh, nation, and then each also had this set of particular rules, uh, and they always came up with something new or funky they wanted to try out. So X1 uh, Isle of Dread was trying out some ideas about wilderness rules. Yeah, yeah. But it's a great, great, great adventure. Uh, they've redone it for 5e by Goodman, one of those big monster... Oh, uh, yeah, I've got one of them downstairs. I've got one yeah. by you know, and, and you know what it, those books. Uh, you know, I'll tell you what's really cool about those books. Now, I haven't bought any since since the B the Borderlands one in that one, just because I've been whatever. I'm, I'm not really doing five E much anymore, and I'm then working for another publishing company and all that. But and I just don't haven't really been any cons in a while. But uh, what was cool about that book, and also with the other one, was they had all these little extra stuff. They went in and filled out all the little areas on the map that weren't filled out, and gave you extra stuff. So it was really yeah. That's really that's. I don't do 5e, uh, but I do like the um, yeah, that right. they've done expansion work on in those Goodman releases. So yeah, they filled out all the little places you wondered about in originally in the model. What is this? Well, they've got something in there now, which is really cool. And there's a lot of good material, you know, through the Dragon magazines that, that goes along with that. Like you were talking about the Savage Tide stuff and all that. There's a ton of. I mean, you can that model can get really deep. There's yeah, there's a um, a poster map for Isle of Dread, I think, from one of the later dragons, and then Savage Tide's dungeon, you know, and dungeon at the end was doing those Pezo uh, adventure paths, yeah, you, which were as a particular style of of uh, adventure design, mm -hmm. uh, and Savage Tide's a big big thing, but I think like uh, Anna was saying, Anna, that's uh, definitely Greyhawk, isn't it? mean Isle of Dread? 
Savage Tides. Oh yeah, Savage Tide. Oh, definitely. Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah, Savage Tide. Yeah, definitely. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yep. That is yeah. is uh, Paiso Hawk, so to speak. It was that era yeah. when uh, yeah. <clears throat> Paiso published uh, Dunyan and 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 Dragon magazine. So it was a recurring theme there. And it's yeah, it's very much so. They they expanded down and added Sasserine and and a whole bunch of the areas around it. And it ties into the Shackled City with with the yeah. um, um, oh what. Uh, place uh, cauldron yeah so which is uh, that's that like continuity. south of uh, yeomanry isn't it it's it's a, a, a medio a, a med it starts oh, in the okay. medio jungle yeah. and then you go around and you go down the azure sea and 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 down deep down there to the isle of dread at the end of the campaign yeah it's so cool it's, it's like a, a sea journey so to speak it starts out in Caesarine, i think yeah and 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 it's kind of a city adventure and then it you go on yeah. that long trek on a ship around and and it's it's several thousand miles but they kind of i think it's done fairly rudimentary that the long sea voyage down to the isle of dread so to speak they don't play that out because that's then you have to go through scarlet brotherhood country and and that is a campaign in itself just going yeah. that part but they kind you of start out at that first bit. level and make it yeah <laughs> Mike brought up those pirates down there I had never heard before on Wednesday night. Oh, yeah, exactly. The pirate isles and stuff. So they, they yeah. kind of skim over a lot of the parts that are there on the way, but they needed to make the campaign more manageable in size, I'm sure, in time. So so they so they kind of cut right to the the Isle of Dread at the end. All right, so Gary Gary has uh, informed me he will not be coming on tonight, but we have four people on, so we're good. So yeah, all good. All right, so as we finish up here, I know we're close to time here. Um, there's a couple we missed, and this has been covered enough with the five e books and stuff. But we didn't even we never touched Salt Marsh in both we episodes. Didn't. We never touched yeah. any of the Salt Marshes. But we we've done several episodes on Salt Marsh. Yeah. Uh, we we done we did Mike and me did a, a long one. I when, remember you. When, yeah, when it came out, when the mm -hmm. new the the Ghost of Salt Marsh came out, we kind of went through the book and, and did a kind of a. That was one of the most thorough review. We looked at each chapter and discussed it and saw some of where it came from because it's it's all basically regurgitated and redone content that was been previously been published and then just updated and added to and converted to to. Fire. Yeah, and very very um the, the like the Salt Marsh modules in Ghost of Salt Marsh, they're very um their detail level as far as uh, stats is very low so yeah. they work out almost like a generic adventure um i know that they've stripped out the 1e stats but they haven't really stuffed them with 5e so that Not that it, much that's true yeah, yeah you know i mean uh, <laughs> there's some physics changes you know like uh i don't really worry too much about um the mechanics but there's some mechanics that are like the way the physical world works mm -hmm. and um there's some differences between uh may you know the way that that world works in three four e five e pathfinder um so that yeah, it, that it physics. changes some of the physics of the world that you're playing yeah. in and that was an interesting book because they, I think one of the key points with the book was to introduce ship rules and seafaring rules and stuff. And that's actually one of the appendixes. So the, one of the key features of the book is hidden away in an appendix. And then they put yeah. some adventures and, and some other stuff that they could kind of find in the old cupboards and put that into a book. And, and that is kind of the, the, so the most interesting bit, I think, for most 5e players is not the adventure, it's the rules for, for doing seaborne adventures. And, yeah, because they, and, and they took um, of Ships in the Sea and they converted it for 5th edition Yeah. In, in the Ghost of Salt Marsh. So, so the book is kind of the, the 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 important bits are kind of beside the points, which is kind of to me weird. It's it should be sold for for those rules because there are whole in third edition there were like shipwreck that was a whole book a whole volume that had the same thing, and there were several third party publishing that was <clears throat> did the same thing that was really good, and here they did it for fifth edition and hid it in an appendix. Yeah. Chuck, thanks. That was awesome. It was really but cool. Salt Marsh, you know, I mean, Salt Marsh is interesting because. Most of the setting uh, is very medievalish, and yeah. yet Salt Marsh is more of Elizabethan, um, uh, you know, era. Um, you know, the feel is more of. Uh, yeah. Uh, it wouldn't be inappropriate with cannons and uh, rapiers and 
uh, th that's always I've always kind of seen uh, Keolan because yeah, it's of not that. medieval feudal in 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 the, the, no. the sense of it. No, that's very no. true. Yep. Absolutely right, Jason. Yep. Pick up on that. Yep. So the of the ship. So those uh, those gift ones that Tro Chuck at Troller Games just gave you that makes you eligible for all. We got a big we got a big subscriber giveaway um, uh, cool. on Thursday, which I'll talk about. So um, yeah, I agree on the, that salt marsh thing. I want I want to rub uh, one last thing. I want to rub in Jason's face a little bit. But Jason, have you, <laughs> have you gotten your copy of this yet? Oh yeah, yeah, I got, you got it. eight. I, you I got Vortex Eight. Really cool. Okay. What All is right. that? This is Vortex Magazine number eight. And the reason I bring this up is because this is a hidden gem missing Greyhawk adventure. It's from 1993. And it's this one. And it's placed on the map. And has placed it very near the Sewell, in the Sewell Forest, the Pomarge, um, Principality Vilk border, where I ran it. I ran it last year, the Hidden Temple of Arithnal. All right, and it's in here. It's a second edition adventure, and I wanted to mention it. It's here in Vortex number eight. It's specifically written for Greyhawk. Oh. And, uh, yeah, and uh, so here's my lovely copy. It took me two years to get and yeah. uh, <laughs> uh, to find this. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's such a rare magazine, but that's one, that, you know, it's levels uh, two yeah, to I, five. I, I... Go ahead, it Jason. took me a long time to track down on eBay, and I finally got it just by luck. Somebody had put up uh, a, a set of uh, Vortex, which are most mostly garbage, I thought. But um, uh, th that is the one gem Stuff issue that was just uh, amid the uh, the others. And uh, I snagged it up as soon as I saw it because the last one I ordered um, uh, ended up just being Vortex 7 instead of Vortex 8. Yeah, there's only nine Vortex to magazines. I've never, so, I don't think I've ever heard of them before. Yeah, it was out from 90 to 93. Uh, and there's Call of Cthulhu in this one. Vampire uh, is in this, but there, this this independent oh, really? journal has a Greyhawk. Yeah, has a Greyhawk adventure I, in it. Now so. this this is um, I especially because uh, Chuck and I wanted to bring this up. There is a I don't know if it's in print because it's an old D20 Trollords uh, supplement. Okay. Uh, it's it's like Treasures of Greyhawk in a sense because it's a set. Of very short ideas, um, it's called cities and settlements. Yes, and I, uh, we actually were talking about it on the AMA the other day. Actually, that came up. Someone brought it up in chat on Twitter. I'm I'm expanding the second or third scenario uh, for um, called Crossroads, or is it the first? Uh, it's called Crossroads, and uh, um, that one is uh, I'm dropping into. Uh, uh, an area up by Spine Castle, and uh, it is this. I I I was going through a whole bunch of different material, and I'll tell you, this is one of the best of these anthology idea um, for adventure ideas things. And I I, I don't know if it's in print, D twenty, but my this is an excellent. It, it's it's a really excellent set of uh, of mini. You know, like little adventures uh, or the acorns for adventures. I'll have to look and see. You know, I have, now this is nothing official, but I am trying to talk them into, it's an idea I have. I want to come up with a, um, I don't want them to call it like a collector series or something. And a lot of the old stuff that's out of print like that, I want to bring it back a for a little while, maybe at least on PDF, you know what I mean? So that people can, can have access to it. There's a lot of old, you know, pre-company stuff that we did with, you know, with Gary and stuff, D20 stuff that's just out there, you know, and I would love to be able to have access to it for people to to play with, even if it is PDF, you know. So Alderaan T two U C two, it is go on YouTube, adventure number eight hundred and fifty six. We ran Hidden Temple of Arithnal. Tim was involved in that. Remember Tim? You had you had Finder in that one. It's our it's oh, okay. our yeah, it, yeah, it's yeah. our it's our Principality of Yulik group, the first Yulik Pathfinders, and it's in at least three or four sittings. So Adventure Eight Fifty Six was the number for Hidden Temple Rithnal that I ran. So it is available. The video for that is available on YouTube. So there you go. Why are they so, hiding anyway? What's that? Why are they hiding? Why was it hidden? 
though. Yeah, it's hard to get converts if you're hidden. Well, it's a rhythmal, so it's not a it's not a deity yeah. that's uh, broadcasting a lot out there. Uh, I don't need converts; they just need to scare the shit out of yeah. the Jesus out of, of the population. Yeah. Quality, not quantity. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. man, I'm glad I didn't crash the stream. I just hit a wrong button. Holy shit! <laughs> I what are you doing wrong... over there, Jay? Oh my gosh! I yeah, thought I crashed don't touch everything. That thing. Yeah, don't I touch thought that. I crashed I'm... everything there. We need to take that touching that button. Screen oh deck man! Away from you. It's, it's yeah, really absolutely. Yeah. I lost my Streamlabs uh, one thing, but uh, I'll get that up in a second. So uh, wow, um, I know we're a little over, but uh, so. Let's go around and just, uh, if you each have uh, one, uh, you'd like to mention an honorable mention or something, you, you know. Uh, Jason, you got one you want to bring up real quick there? Uh, we talked about it last, uh, two weeks ago. It's got to be a Dwellers in uh, I-1. Dwellers in Forbidden City. Dwellers in Forbidden City. City. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, it's one of the, uh, it's an incredibly iconic adventure. Uh, I, I think it's the first Mongrel Men, the first Yuan T. Uh, it's set down in uh, what? Well, what is it? The Medio or Hep Mono? The bullywugs are there too, right? First time. The, are they there? The what's there? The bullywugs there? Uh, yeah, yeah, I believe so too. Yeah. Oh, it is. It is, an, and uh, it has a wonderful Testoy. depiction of that uh, of the forbidden uh, the forbidden city. It's just that is such a um, it's 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 one of the later, in a sense, uh, early modules. But it is fantastic. It really. Uh, oh, it might. It might even introduce the Scarlet Brotherhood. It. It was the seed. I said this before. It was the seed that started the mongrels. For me. Hey. So um, we had another question. We, we have another question from Chuck, and I think it was early uh, Canadian asked, uh, "Ever consider a CD compilation of the Crusader Mags?" We talked about that, right? Uh, yeah, we have. Yeah. Uh, I'll be honest with you. I'm trying to make it happen again. Yeah. It, it's the problem is, is they don't want to go through the publishing nightmare before, but things are different now. This is the digital world. Right. I think, I think it can be pulled off. I'd love to start doing it again, at least in PDF form. Is it such a, such a great, I mean, we've got so many people um, that we are, you know, we, uh, that you can consider part of our family, like, you know, like Jim Ward and, and the, the the Gygax, you know, brothers, and just all these people that we could bring in and do some cool articles with. I just, you know, just twice a year, you know. Mm -hmm. And I mean, for them, we I think it's something that could be awesome. That's anyway. I'm trying. Um, as far as a, uh, a compilation, I think definitely that's something that should be done. I'm trying to. That's the one on my list too. Me and Jay were just talking about it the other day. I think that would be great. Amongst other cool. things. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you behave yourself. I know, I know. I'm having fun. So, uh, be quiet. <laughs> Tim, what about you? Call out. Call out. What do you want? What What I do you like got? The, the, I like. I want to do the G series. I guess. Yeah, yeah, we did that right before you came. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that was right before the D. We talked about that in depth tonight, how much the G series just meant. I talked about the critical hit, and Len went, head exploded, just like Panul's. Yeah. <laughs> Nine to 90 on that, on that, on that. It was triple damage, right? Yeah, it was, it was horrible. Yeah, no, it wasn't. Uh, I remember making you uh, roll the, the Holy Slipping in Gore from all the giants being slain in that one small one room. Yeah, I remember that, too. So much blood all over the place. It was a... <laughs> But I've run it at least, I think I've run it four times, and it's been different significantly every time. Just depends on the group, and it depends on the, you know, yeah. depends on who you got, and depends on a lot of things. So, always, always the last cool. One was... Oh, Tim froze. Well, You're freezing. My daughter, and she snuck in. We lost you. Try again. All right, can you hear me now? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, okay. Last time I ran it was for my daughter, and they just snuck in, stole treasure, and left. They didn't even do it. <laughs> <laughs> they, they fought, like, one giant and uh, some, I think, the manacore, and then left. Sometimes that's a smart way out. to do things. Absolutely. So, uh, Anna, what about you? When it comes to modules, you know me, I'm, yeah. I'm terrible at modules. So this is definitely not my discussion. So so 
but th there is one that we haven't. Well, we mentioned it first one, the the fate of Istus. So so we mentioned right. it a little bit. So that's one of that I kind of study. That I think it's interesting because it hops from city to city and has city maps in it, which is kind of rare in the Greyhawk world. City maps are, are very rare and. Yes, they are. We need to tre treasure the ones, the few we have, so to speak. And some of them are, are good, in, in, and some of them are not good, in my opinion, in Fate of Estus. And they're very rudimentary in style, too, yeah. so it's, it don't then give much. But at least it's an embryo to work from. Uh, and uh, another one I've never ran, because my campaign was running about, and I was like, oh, man, this is going to change things drastically. So, uh, <laughs> you know, I just uh, let that one go. I have it. That's another one I have. I have all those. I have Vecna lives, and mm -hmm. just never. We never ran those. You know, I have City of Skulls right here, and uh, I, I did not run this one either. You know, did not run this yep. this one either. But they are super interesting. That one, and then I use the evil. Are interesting because all the information they give yeah. about. I use priests and how I use works and the bone shadow and the bone claw and and, and all that stuff. I use organization and his his spells and, and stuff like that. So so they're very interesting from that perspective. I think. Gary says that Bloodstone was meant to be in Greyhawk when stolen by Forgotten Realms. I, you notice that oh, in the H okay. in the H one two three four. Uh -huh. It was all in the same Greyhawk style of, of adventures, and uh -huh. Bloodstone Pass was that big box, was that box set. Uh, yeah. I have a crushed, so, and, it's crushed, mine, the yeah, box. Yeah, they crush very easily, yeah. though. Uh, yeah, any idea of where in Greyhawk Bloodstone Pass was Where was it supposed to be, to be Gary? Where was it supposed to be? So City of Skulls, as Gary's answering, was cool because it had the notoriety system for when they found mm -hmm. you. Uh, that yep. was a cool thing in this. Um, just once again, didn't fit in my. No one cared that Homer. Let was... me ask you. Let me ask a question. Before. Sure. Out of all you guys here, years ago, we created our own notoriety kind of thing before that ever was a thing. I wonder if you guys had ever done anything like that. We had, um, uh, I forget what we called it now. Fame and fame and infamy is what we called it. Well, and they would get points like that, you know, and I would give them out to them every so often, you know, as a group, you know, in a, in a certain area, you know what I mean? Like if you're in water, if well. Using fire sure. for example. Yeah. Can you hear me? Oh yeah. yeah so yeah, water yeah. Being, as being a massive city, not so much. If you go out to a hamlet, you know, people say, Oh, well, we know you guys. You burned down that other hamlet, you know, then the village is up against you or whatever. Um yeah. I have notoriety and fame and and here we go. Oh, it's shit. It's a. oh uh, this one's uh, did it come up? Oh, it's sideways, you dumb thing. Oh, my God. God. So, uh, well, I just, I didn't expect to put it. Greyhawk Mercenary Group ranked in order by fame notoriety. So there's there's the group of, yeah. uh, you know, yeah. so there you go. I just threw it up there, as, right. and it's, it's sideways. But, um, yeah. yeah, so, yeah, I use I use, I use use that for the mercenary <laughs> groups, and Altamira has its own notoriety fame system, Greyhawk and Hardby, all the different mercenary yeah. groups. I all. find it so fascinating how... You know, it's kind of like um, getting off on a history thing here, how you find pyramids all over the, the world in different cultures. Same with gamers. We all developed our own maps, our own stuff, our own little rules. They're all similar, but we didn't know yep. each other, you know? Yep. So cool. Yeah. I, I do the uh, I do it each each uh, play character gets uh, a fame or notoriety. It's like a plus and minus scale. So, so sure. plus that your fame, that's a positive relation with each faction of the game. So like each right. op opponent faction. So if they go to the city, then the city management either likes or So every time I create a faction of some sort of the campaign, each player character gets a plus or a minus. And if they get enough pluses, then they would get all sorts of favors. And enough uh, minuses, then there would be a, a posse oh, yeah. sending out to kill them. So yeah, to speak. that's awesome. Yeah, that's it, good stuff. It should have like a public public notoriety, like the Silver Death assassinated somebody else. So everyone's scared of the Silver Death. But if they know your name is the assassin, you are the Silver Death. That's not yeah. good. So yeah, that being recognized yeah. is bad. <laughs> yeah, it's it's kind of not not open, so you, they can they, they the players can kind of figure it out and ask ask around for it, so to speak. But it's not something I will tell them right away. The same thing with the alignment standing. I can kind of put in pluses and minuses on the alignment, and then I can switch alignment for them. And for most characters, it doesn't matter. But if you're a cleric or or, or something like that, then or a paladin or something, then it might be have 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 kind of value, so to speak, to what alignments you have. Very interesting discussion tonight, don't you all think? I really appreciate you all for yeah. coming on. Let's uh, let's do some shout outs here. Jason, why don't you start us off? Well, um, I, I've haven't done much this uh, summer, but I am 
uh, moving a lot of old material and a little new material over to Canon Fire. I, I'm not really doing anything with uh, the bloggers. I, I have a journal now on Canon Fire, and uh, Canon Fire is such a vast site. There's, it's you know, it's an old, old site. It's uh, you know, it's it's over 20 years old, and um, it's Gary Hollian's, uh, you know. Uh, website but there's so much material on there uh it's a forum so that you uh unlike you know the the, the kind of scrolling you get from discord uh -huh. you can go there and find articles from way in the past um talk about them now and you bring it up just like all the old forum websites are where it's a thread and you add to the thread and so there's 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 articles there's stories there's journals um I've I've got my approved index on there because I like a scholarly format and it's been moved into Excel. Um, there's just all this stuff, and I just urge people to go look at Canon Fire. Uh, Canon Fire links to all these other places, uh, and you will find unbelievable amounts of uh, Greyhawk material on Canon Fire. Very cool. Jason, I'm glad you came back again, and you know we'll have you on yeah, multiple times. I need to go back again to Cannon Fire again. Yep. So two of the three, pe well, three of the four people on here have something in common for Virtual Greyhawk Con, and what is that, Tim? <laughs> there's an adventure coming. Oh, yeah. there's an adventure coming. What is it? Here now, spear warriors, heed my call. Let my words kindle fire of rage. That is the first call to the gathering of the barbarians. Oh. The Pelu tribe is calling people because they have a, a war council and they have a new path for war. And that cool. is what my adventure will be. It's called Dark Heart awesome. Hand Strike. Dark awesome. Hand Heart Strike. Oh, I got it backwards. I'm sorry. <laughs> there's, it is, uh, there's five of them. It is, They're it, the five. They will be the five fingers of the Dark Hand. Nice, and Jason and Anna are playing in that along with yep. right, yeah, along with there. Carlos Lysing, yep. Matthew Lazinski, and William Henry Dvorak, and that is going to be a highlighted stream for us Saturday at eleven. Tim, what time? It's Tim, froze. Tim froze again. It froze. Oh, yeah, nine. That's, I think. I think it's. I think it's nine. Nine a.m. Nine a.m. Nine a.m. Yeah, because Chuck. Yeah, I, I was wanting to play in that, but I couldn't because yeah. I've got nine, nine o'clock. Yeah, 9 a.m. 9 a.m., yes. And, and that's uh, like uh, October... Uh... October 3rd, 2, 3, 4, so October 3rd. That's a huge day. I'll be producing that game, and then I'll be running a game for Gary and Luke Gygax and Eric Mona that night. So, yeah, it's going to be a rough day. So, <laughs> Alan Chuck yeah. and Anna. Uh, yep. And Steve. And Steve, Steve Chenault, too. Oh, my gosh, what a group wow. that's going to be. Mm -hmm. yep. Fritz lives again. Wow. <laughs> what a group that will be that night. I can't wait. Uh, just be yeah. a blast of a day. Uh, anything else up with you, Tim? I mean, you uh, you got a lot going on, I know. Yeah, they, there's been a lot. Just feel busy. Uh, personally, uh, daughter going to college, dropping her off. Yeah. Getting, yeah. So, it, it's life. It's, it's life. life. Life's been busy. So I'm only, you know, I can't produce as fast as you guys, so I'm just focusing on October. Extort, I can't say that. I, I all I can say is, uh, we did we um, we did as as expected. So that's all I'm going to say. I, I I I we're sworn to secrecy on the big bed. Oh when, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so um, I'm 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 happy with how well. We I did. am happy Good. too. Yeah, I want you to win. So I am happy with the way we performed in the big yes, bed. Yes, me too. So uh, yep. my you know with uh, myself, Anna, William, Henry, Dvorak, uh, Brian, Sublime, and the Nazrats. Yeah. Were, so when you see the team. episode, I hope you can. Agree You're with going us. to be yeah. very entertained. Yes. Yeah. Very. During our, uh, that's yep. what we'll say. <laughs> yeah, yep, very entertaining. Extremely, yep. extremely entertained on, on that yep. episode of the Big Bang. It was Bad a very fascinating out. game, that yeah. for sure. Yep. Yeah, so uh, that's what I can say. It was on a lot that. of fun in that. Yep. Anna, how about you? Uh, I have a whole bunch of things going on. The, the first raw version of the index of the Atlas is coming out tomorrow. 
so you can kind of look through all the thousands of names and stuff and and see if there is something missing if there is something misspelled and and stuff like that it's just a, a quality check so to nice. speak and th then i will move into because i need to put this index and format it and and stuff like that we're going to put in uh, duplicates so we're going to have things will be sorted under both kingdom and ernst or whatever it is like like the duchy that will be like uh, under under d and under u etc and so on so so there will be a bunch of places that could be because you might not know you might look for for things under under the the prefix or the name itself so there's a, a bunch of stuff like that that needs to be be duplicates and and sorted in and then it needs to be formatted and put into illustrator so that is one thing that i'm, I'm digging into say so the, the atlas is going into the final treat so to speak to to finalize it so that will be my big September work. And then there is my, my campaign map um, for my Shield Lens campaign is moving forward too. Ooh. And I think it's going to be really, really cool. Uh, I have a first set of, of, of six, seven players that I've talked to earlier today. So we kind of gearing up for a start after the um, Greyhawk Con. That will be a, a start of my campaign. So in almost two years since I ran the Greyhawk campaign again, so I'm very eager to get back in. So, nice. to speak. so there will be a lot of, of uh, production and stuff from that, and that will all come to my patrons and to everybody on the website afterwards. So once the the campaign is getting under, and, and a lot of that material will be will be published for everyone to to use afterwards. And it also will be the Sheelan area will be the first test area for my um, for the new generation of Rayhawk maps and I'm looking forward to it it's it, I think it could be could be a cool set of maps so to speak that that will be a set, setting a new standard it's very experimental that's why I'm using it for my own campaign because they might not turn out to be that good so to speak so we'll see uh -huh. and there might be uh, gl uh, glitches and, and whatnot and so on and so forth but it's it's I think it's going to be a, a real fun and cool cool way to do it and also the um the my camp i'm preparing for the my seminar at greyhawk con yes. so, so that is underway so okay. i've done hundreds and hundreds of edits on my campaign map and put stuff in there on my my flannies ver my campaign version of of the flannies map of the the, the good old flannies map so to speak so i put tons and tons and tons in there that only been <clears throat> part of it has been in my head and other things have just been notes scratched down or put in Evernote or on pieces of paper, old notebooks and stuff. So I, I'm making sure I put all that down in there. So so, so I've detailed, I put every, um, uh, the, like the Kingdom of Furyundi is now made up of baronies. So there's like 20, 25 oh. of them and stuff with with uh, local towns and villages and, and stuff like that. So there's a whole bunch of areas where I've had previous campaigns are highly detailed. There are hundreds of new settlements and, and, and roads and then all that stuff on, on the campaign map. And there's some, some kind of interesting changes too. And elven areas and stuff are very much more developed. If you want to see what Celine looks like in my campaign version, that will be interesting. And a lot of elven names and, and stuff like that. And, and other areas are more, very highly detailed. And the Empire of Ayus is now and the Bone March are also having a lot of details in it. And and because those areas were kind of just empty and, and the same thing with the, well, the bone, the, the horn lands, so the horn society lands are now part of, of, of the IU's empire, but it's detailed. So, so, so I have towns and villages, and there are orc and, and tribes of orcs and, and, and uh, hobgoblins and stuff like that Good. on the map with names and stuff. So, so there's a lot of, of cool things. So that one will come out a day or so before my seminar for everyone to look at. So you can kind of pour over it and come up with questions and stuff for the seminar. So that's coming up. So the main event on Friday night is the campaign, the Grail campaign of Anna Meyer. It'll be on yeah. Lord Gazamba channel. Thank you. Uh, from 7 to 9 p.m. Eastern. Okay. Uh, that's a lot. We'll fit as much content as we can in those two hours. If we run a little <laughs> yeah, late. Yeah, we have to squeeze in. Yeah, yeah, but the good thing is, is that um, the other uh, Wills and Carlos's is on their channels. So if we run a little late, it's no big deal. You know, uh, well, we don't want to, yeah, we don't want to, much, right, but, right. Yeah. But if we run five, ten minutes late, it's not, yeah, it's, we can, yeah. we can, we can run questions and answer at the end, yeah. so to speak. So people who want to stay on and, and ask questions can do that. So we can run the major uh, QA at, at the end as long as people want, to. absolutely. Yep. So, uh, a lot of great stuff coming on, um, for that. And, uh, how about you, Chuck? 
Um, man. Uh, wow. First off, praise the old one. Anyway. Man. <laughs> <laughs> um, awesome. Yeah, I've got a lot. Well, Jay, I, yeah, I'm just. <laughs> yes. I mean, we've got so much going on right now. It's unbelievable. I've got four different VTTs we're working on getting stuff into, and, and uh, which is going to be exciting for us because, you know, when I first started working for them, that was one of my main things. Of course, that's I wear a lot of hats now, but uh, probably the biggest thing I'm working on right now, we not me, but a team. Is we're getting we're gonna we're almost close to releasing a uh, beta version of our organized play, which is going to be amazing, and I can't wait because we've designed to be completely open. There's not going to be a lot of rules. There will be seasons of content that you can get that's going to be world agnostic. You know what I mean? It's going to be about playing um, any of our products. It doesn't matter what world you want to be in Greyhawk, you want to be in Star, whatever. It doesn't matter. You can do it. But the thing is, it's designed so that people can find each other and play. That's what the whole key thing is about. It's not about trying to sell books or anything. It's just about trying to connect people. So we're going to have a really, really nice interface where you can register and people can put their games up there and everybody that's a member can see it. And then what the cool thing about it is, if you play, then you get credit towards merchandise that we either produce or like hats and shirts and crap like that too. But, but like actual books and stuff too. So you can get free stuff just for playing. We're just trying to we're just trying to create a a system that will allow people to play our products, you know, and and keep our games going. You know, we're not we we're, we don't we're not any illusions. We're going to be like Watsy or anything like that. But but something I tell people all the time, and Jay's heard me say this: if if people aren't playing your games, your games will die. Look at Rollmaster, and we don't want that to happen. We've been around yeah. for a while. We've got a good pedigree, and I love our stuff. It's old school. It's great, you know. And I can grab. One of our modules, I can grab a, a module from first edition or even expert or whatever, and it all works together. It's just, yeah. it's awesome, man. You know, that's at the end of the day, that's what I like. I don't want to have to try and sit down with a calculator and spend three hours trying to figure out how to do something. You know, I just want to play the game and find people. And now with COVID and all that going on, it's even more important to be able to try to have some sort of a network for people. And yeah. there's not a network out there that will allow you to play, you know, like I want, you know, like we want to be able to play old school. Does that make sense? You know, it's not no offense to, to watching five or anything like that, but they're the biggest thing out there. So that's really the only really good, strong, you know, organized play system around the world. And we want to try and create something. Of course, we won't be global. I, I would be nice if it's global. That would be for the members. But we just want to make something that people can find each other and play games with, you know. Yeah. So that's probably the biggest thing I'm working on right now. I mean, there's a lot of other stuff too, I've, you know, but, but that's like the big, big thing I, 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 want, I want to work on. We've got other things coming up the, the pipeline, of course, always, you know, new adventures and new books. We've got two core rule books coming out. And I wouldn't say core rule books, but we're going to take a book. It's going to have all of our spells. And if you guys are ever not familiar with that stuff, I'm not trying to plug, 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 but because I know it's oh, great. Hard, but but, but they, there's a, there is a magic system we have in our books that came out um, in previous uh uh, supplements, but now you can find them in uh, in uh, the Adventures Backpack, and we're going to come out with it, our spell book. It's rune magic, where you use runes, and it is the wildest stuff I've ever seen that Steve has come up with, because there's these different types of runes, uh, categories, I guess, but what's really cool about it is you do, you take a rune, and you can, sure, you can create a magical effect with it, right? Like I had a guy in one of my games take one, he drew something on a water skin, and he used that as a weapon to draw water essence from the elemental, and he actually damaged the water elemental with it. I would have never thought of that, but was really cool but you can actually take those runes and plug them into each other and make even more wild stuff with it so it's really cool you know so we're, we're coming out with a really big book that's going to have nothing but all of our magic in it period all the magic from all of our books ever so i'm looking forward to that that's going to be a big one and then on the horizon we've got a brand new uh a castle keepers guy which is like a dungeon master's guide and i have to say ours is um pretty neat it's it, it harkens to gary's you know it's got all kinds of great information in it. it's just an optional book with lots of stuff in it so i'm looking forward to that that's going to be a nice product to come out but yeah we're staying real busy we're just trying to keep the fires lit you know and and bring people together and play games that's what we want to do you know so, yeah. chuck thank you for such being mm -hmm. such a great sponsor here i mean the gym board giveaway was great and if you haven't seen it i, I've, I shouted it out just a second ago what's that 15 percent off oh yeah sure uh you get 15 percent off any order from troll lord games by using that code which is forever as long as you know 
as long as I'm here, as long as we're here. Uh, well, that, if you get that lich process done, you'll be around for a while. <laughs> <laughs> On all purchases from the Troller Game Store, that you can use that at any point. Uh -huh. All right, so are you ready? Are you ready for this? I'm going to burn through this as quickly as I can. <laughs> all right, here we go. So Wednesday night, this is going to be a great show. They're all going to be great shows. Wednesday night, episode number 63, Legends and Lore. Good night. Uh, the Circle of Eight and other great casters. So we're going to go into that. We're going to go into them all. I got some great pictures from Dungeon Meister. Gary, you're going to like him. You're going to say, hey, oh, my gosh, this is a great best artwork for Greyhawk. It probably is. Uh, I'm trying to find a picture of Leamond. I can't find one that was ever written, uh, done, unfortunately. But uh, like I said, a miracle the chaotic. There's a whole bunch of them. Abby Dalzam, maybe. Uh, a Michael cover. Uh, a whole bunch of different um, uh, spellcasters we're going to go over. Warren and Starcoat. You know, the whole whole crew. Uh, and uh, that'll be on Wednesday night. All righty. Thursday night. I don't know if I made an updated uh, one. I think I got the wrong date on this. I got the wrong date on this, okay? We continue Mystery of the Forge. It's the 27th. I never did an updated one. All right. Now, the big thing about Thursday night's adventure, if you saw, and I've been scrolling through all this, our 3D print stuff. All right. That's, that's a building. We have our new road system up from Gamescape 3D. Another great new sponsor of ours. And there's the roads that Build a Master Crafter has done. We have, I have 18 pieces coming. That's only five of those pieces. We have that coming. It's our first sponsored giveaway from Gamescape 3D. Nice. All right. For, and this is what we're going to be giving away. That, that's a King's Road piece. Where do you see those? That's going to be awesome. All right. These are just some in color code of some of the great things that they can do in entire ruins. But here we go. All right. That is... That is the Elven Tower. All right. This, that is an Elven Fortress. And that is the Elven Tree House. Okay. So you're going to get the, the STL print of the Elven Tree House for a follower general giveaway. The subscribers will get that plus the Elven Fortress and STL for your print use. So if you are, have a 3D printer, uh, now's the time uh, to, you know, to subscribe. And then you don't have to worry about being on because remember the follower giveaways you have to be on for. But if you, in the 3D print world, what a great deal. I mean, it's fantastic looking. I think that's some blow-ups of it. There's some more pictures of the Elven Treehouse. It opens up from the inside so you can utilize it, you know, and you just have to print it out. Uh, we're going to be, we're going to be featuring more and more of their stuff on on our, uh of their prints this is a ferry system kind of think of josie whales when they're going across that river in missouri that's yeah it's a pull ferry we're going to get this all printed up and utilized there's a lot of great unique stuff on his site so um I want to see that in action. That's going to sound, that sounds really cool. Yeah, man. I, I, I love this guy. Jeremy's a, it's like a one man show. It's a great, it's an American company. He's out of Kentucky. Uh, that is and the roads are amazing. Yeah, really. And that's just the beginning, man. He's got, you've seen the vids. He's got all these great sets. That is the goblin swamp hut. That was in the Patreon for this month. His Patreon guys is $3 and 50 cents a month to get all this cool things for each month's Patreon. So now I have three Patreons. I have Anna, Carlos and, and Gamescape 3D. It's just, a, it's just a no brainer. So there you go. So that is Thursday. This is September's Patreon that I have there. And that is some more. Go look at that. I mean, it's a stacked up goblin. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, it's awesome. It's, it's really awesome. Okay. Next week. I thought about this a while. And I was just like, what are we going to do? I was going to, uh, our guests, I have not gotten any guests finalized, so I had to come up with an idea. And then I thought to myself, what, what do we need? What do people ask me most about my campaign? Where the hell are all these classes come from? That you have, <laughs> right? You have 40 classes. So not my homebrew. So here's what we're going to do. Character classes in Dragon Magazine. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So we're going to go over. Tim likes this. So, Tim, hopefully you could be on. I didn't want to put your uh, name you down officially. You should be on more than me on this one. Yes. Yeah. But, Anna, you're always on. So, sure okay. Yeah. I, I live here. Make sure you so, come yeah. to the Paladins. Yes. Uh, so, yeah. this is what we're going to do. We're going to go over Leonard's while well, he's on, the Archer and the Deathmaster. Then we'll go over the Duelist, the Bandit, the Barbarian Cleric. 
all right? The yes. Sentinel, yeah. the Guardian, all right? Yeah. Then we're going to go over ones we don't use, like the Mystic, the Smith, right, Tim? Yeah. There's a whole yeah. bunch of them in there I don't use, yeah. but they're in that that I, I'm going to give people op so you all see. Thanks, man. Thank you. The Jester, Mystery, I use the Jester. I use the Jester in my campaign. In fact, the leader of of, of Theo's Heroes, Theodore Craxis, is a Jester. So, yeah, I use that. So, yeah, all yeah. them. So, there you go. That's what we're going to be doing next week. We'll talk about all those classes. Are you going to include classes that are reworks of original classes? Well, I'm going to talk about the uh, I'm going to talk about the Dragon Seventy Two Cavalier, which I use over the yeah, Antarctic. Well, yeah. What about the there's there's one in the there monk. The monk. Yes, I like, that's, I we're going to talk about the monk know. too, and from Dragon Fifty Three. Yeah, absolutely. The, the, the improved monk. Absolutely. He's got a lot to Thank think you. about. Thank you, Pietani. Thank you so very much for that, man. All right, so that's what we're going to do next week. All right, and I got to do these shout outs. I did them before. Two weeks from Thursday is virtual. As ReaperCon live online, we are the kickoff event for the RPGs. Reaper's going to be raiding into us, so we may have two to 500 people coming into the game. And I'm doing four major giveaways. paint Two paint sets, six paints each, uh, the big uh, Lord of the Jungle mini, which is like a $25 mini, and a $25 gift certificate wow. for our subscribers. What's that? I said, "Wow, that's yeah. great!" Yeah, we got four. Yeah, it's, that's like a, we're giving away about a hundred dollars in, 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 in giveaways that night for ReaperCon Live Online, Return of the Portal Master. Hopefully, Tim will be here in person for this one. So uh, there we go. Ro, there. I'll throw that over. Thank you for the follow. Thank you so very much. Glad you like what we're uh, talking about. That is Thursday night, normal time, seven thirty p.m. We are the kickoff uh, RPG uh, for ReaperCon Live. And then our bonus Gabin, and this is as far out as I projected, Saturday morning, 9 a.m. of ReaperCon Live. Modding and customizing minis. I'll be hosting Mike Disney and Build a Master Crafter as they show you the tricks of the trade. To, you don't need, who needs Hero Forge? We don't need that. T you take Reaper minis and they're easy to mod. They're going to show you guys some tricks that uh, guys and gals, some tricks that they've done. And uh, that'll be, a, and we'll have a gab in that Sunday night, 108 as well. So uh, this is uh, going to be uh, um, a bonus gab in that Saturday morning, 9 a.m. Eastern, September 5th. All right. And then finally, please, if you haven't, $3.12, sign up, please, for Virtual Greyhawk Con and then. Sign up for the virtual events, uh, the, the highlighted streams, or any games you want to play in. Uh, we have 58 events. Uh, 18 are sold out. 10 are highlighted streams. So we have about half of the events are not sold out yet. I think I might have a, what, I might have one spot left, I think. You think you have one spot left, Chuck, in uh, Shadows of the Halfling Hall. Chuck is running, and, uh, and I ran that a couple weeks ago. I, he's using... The characters from my Order of Ulick campaign, the new group, he's using those characters, okay? So if you want to play any of those characters that actually ran through Shadows of the Halfling Hole on mine from Narwhal, you're going to get an opportunity to play some of them if you want to sign up for that. Busy, 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 Jimmy. And that's not the half of it. Yeah. Well, we, I can't tell you any of the secret stuff. So uh, it, it hurts, but I'm, I, I'm holding off until we uh, make sure it's a, an official announcement. But um, that's what's going on. 58 events. Uh, we already beat. Uh, my goal was 50 events and 125 signups. We've beaten both of those. Uh, I'm reaching out to, and Josh Pop's helping me. We're reaching out to other organizations and trying to get them involved. Uh, just, uh, hey, please participate. Have, have some fun. Uh, that weekend is going to be a busy weekend, October 2nd, 3rd, and 4th. Tim's got a great game to watch that Saturday morning. Chuck's got a great game. It's going to be highlighted on Troller Games Channel. Anna's got a great seminar. I have five events I'm, I'm uh, um, producing. The, uh, Anna's and Tim's, uh, my, my highlight game Saturday night. Brian's Return of the Salamore Mangers. And then our final, final event on Sunday night which is the SD Experts Gabin, which is on this time slot, same, you know, so it'll be earlier, 7 p.m., Gary Hulian, Len Lakafka, Malden, and, and Alan Grow, Grow Dog are the four that have committed to the SD Experts show. And Anna and I will be hosting that. So there you go. So, all awesome. right. Great. Thank you.
Thank you all. We'll see you Wednesday night. Thank you all for the subs, the follows, yes, the you. cheers. What a uh, Chuck, thanks for coming on. Thank, thank you, you. Uh, for hopping on and sharing your experiences. It's great. Jason, thank you so very much for coming on and sharing your yeah. experiences too. And uh, thank you, Tim, for hopping on. And Anna, as always, thank you. We'll see thank you. you. Sounds like we are going to keep it rolling here. So um, we're going to raid Sauro's tail. All right, that's Galger. Um, he's got a good... He's, He's got a good uh, thing going on, so uh, I promise we'd ra we will raid into them, okay? Uh, let me set that up. Thanks. Let me see. Am I going to hit the wrong button here? I hit the right button. <laughs> da -da, da -da, da -da. Will I do this correctly? Da -da. All right, setting it up. If you can give him a follow, he's run. He's he was like a he was like a 53, and uh, we could almost double that. So thanks, Wiley. Thank you, Canadian yeah, thank Dorgum, you. Everyone, here we go. We're gonna head in five seconds. Four, three, two, one. See it. Yeah, I gotta let that, I'm gonna let that run to the end.